Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat and every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. Feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever hold. Gillette's cavalcade of sports is on the air. From Ebbets Field, here in Brooklyn, Gillette presents the World Series. Afternoon, baseball fans everywhere. It's the old redhead, Red Barber, with Mel Allen, greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company as the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Dodgers warm up for the fifth game in the state championship classic. Gillette, maker of world-famous Gillette razors, blades, and shaving creams, as leading events in various fields of sport the year-round. Gillette also broadcasts and telecasts the major boxing match of the week every Friday night. This is a perfectly beautiful day from the standpoint of the weather. It couldn't be nicer. The temperature is right at 80 degrees, a completely clear, blue, sunny sky. The field is in apple pie shape. And the question now is what goes in this fifth game as the Dodgers are stormy? In other words, Brooklyn is two down with three games to go. The Yanks, as you know, lead three games to one in the best four out of seven. So this one has to be more seriously considered than any other that has come about. And uh, for those of you who haven't looked in the uh, little red book of baseball records or who are not uh, quickly conversant, only twice in the entire history of the World Series, going back to 1903 when World Series as properly constituted began, has a team behind three games to one come on to win. In 1903, the Boston Red Sox did it in the first World Series. The last team to do it was the Pittsburgh Pirates against the Washington Nationals in 1925. So, uh, there you have that. Now, about the pitches. It is, as expected, Vic Rashi, the big towering 21-game winner, who is coming back for a second shot. Rashi, who has been charged with the sole Yankee defeat. So, Rashi is going to get another opportunity this afternoon. Vic, Vic Rashi, and as Casey Stingle uh, smilingly says, Rashi is starting, and Joe Page is ready in the bullpen. For the Dodgers, it is the unpredictable right-hander, Rex Barney, who can be as good as any pitcher and uh, can be as wild as any. You think of uh, the little girl in Longfellow's poem when you think about Barney. And uh, to forecast how he'll pitch, well, you don't know. He can be very, very good. Or, in other words, good enough uh, as a no-hitter, witnesses uh, for itself uh, two years ago. And Barney, of course, in the 1947 series, uh, threw a very hard ball, it was quite wild, and uh, some of the big moments came in some of his uh, strikeouts, especially one of DiMaggio with the bases loaded. In fact, he did that twice. So it is Barney uh, going for Brooklyn. This is his first appearance in this World Series. He was in the bullpen two days, but he never threw in the bullpen at all, so as far as rest is concerned, he's completely rested. Uh, manager Shotton, before deftly uh, coming down to Barney, uh, had a little uh, talk with Preacher All and wanted to know if by any chance uh, the thin left-hander who pitched the one nothing win in game two uh, thought that he uh, should uh, attempt this one today. And Rowe said no. Uh, he didn't think he had uh, enough rest. Rowe, uh, during the regular season, never pitched with less than uh, five days rest, sometimes seven. Uh, he's quite slender of physique and uh, quite frail. But uh, said Mr. Rowe, and he doesn't bat an eyelash, I'll pitch tomorrow. The lineups will be no surprise to you, I don't think. Uh, the teams have shaken down. So here they are. For the Yankees, as they go into game five, it is Rizzuto again leading off and playing a magnificent game at shortstop. Tommy Henrik, uh, living up to every letter in uh, the phrase that has been lovingly bestowed upon him in recent years, old reliable. Tommy Henrik at first base. Yogi Berra is catching. He says his hand is even sore than it has been, but he wouldn't get out of there unless uh, six wild horses yanked him away from the plate. And I don't see any horses in the ballpark today. There's no room for uh, anybody but ticket holders. Joe DiMaggio, and he, of course, is one of the uh, uh, most uh, heartwarming stories in the series. One of baseball's all-time great players. 
Who has been plagued this year? First with that uh, sore heel, and then uh, uh, virus uh, pneumonia that bedded him. Yet he was able to come off of his crutches at one time and uh, Spark plugged the Yankees to a, a win against the Red Sox when they needed it, then came out of a hospital, and Spark plugged the Yankees in their last two games, which got them into the series. And DiMaggio, so far, has had one scratch single. He has struck out uh, five times. He has fallen down twice in center field. DiMaggio in center. Uh, perhaps uh, the human interest story that's been most overlooked, this great ball player who is not having a great series. Now we have Tommy Brown, who was the uh, batter yesterday with a double and a triple, knocked in three runs, the winning runs. Brown at third. Woodling is in left field for New York. Mapes is in right field. His double sliced in the left field corner. They got in the first couple of Yankee runs and got them started yesterday as they won six to four. Coleman, who's played a fine game at second base. And Vic Rashi coming back for his second start. Now for the Dodgers. The batting order again goes with captain and uh, shortstop Pee Wee Reese leading off with a right hander going for New York. Man, the shot goes to his left hand hitters, which means third baseman Johnny Jorgensen is hitting number two. Jorgensen at third, batting second. Schneider in center field, batting third. Robinson at second base, hitting fourth. Batting fifth and in right field is Gene Hermansky. Carl Perello is still out with that injured right one. He just can't go. Hodges at first base is hitting sixth. Marvin Rackley, who came out of the second game of the World Series at the stadium, if you'll recall, with a full muscle in his back, uh, is a surprise nomination. Manager shot him at uh, noon or an hour and 50 minutes ago here in New York. Thought that Olmo would be a starting left fielder. Uh, but Rackley uh, apparently told him that he was all right, and manager Shotton has changed and is going with Rackley in left field. Roy Campanella is catching, and uh, Campanella yesterday, I think, uh, impressed every baseball man in this ballpark with the fineness of his receivership. His throwing, the fact that he was in there digging pitches out of the dirt, uh, that he was taking them out of the air, uh, just about all that you could ask a catcher to do, he did. Campanella catching, and Rex Barney is the pitcher. And for the umpires, we will have the working rotation that we had in game one of the series when it opened at the stadium. That means that Big Cal Hubbard will be back of home plate of the American League staff. Uh, Beans Ridden of the National League staff will be at first. Uh, Ridden is making this series his swan song. He's been in the Major League 24 years. His health has not been too good. He was out several times during the pennant campaign with illness. He is quite light, about uh, 15 pounds off weight, and he figures that he's going back to his adopted state of California and call it a day as far as umpiring goes as soon as this series is over. He's had a great career, and everyone in baseball uh, is deeply indebted to a man who has given so much of himself with such, uh, with such honor and such judicial domain. Art Passarella, hustling young umpire of the American League, will be at second. Lou Jordan, a veteran, will be at third base from the National League staff. In the left field corner will be George Barr in the right of the National League. And in the right field corner will be Ed Hurley of the American League. But I repeat again that the weather is ideal. You could not have a finer day for a baseball game. It is just hot enough, and yet it is not too hot. And um, we'll have to uh, keep a close eye on uh, the official timepiece our Longine watch to be sure that this ball game uh, does not get underway before the New York State Sunday Law, which says that no athletic event, baseball or otherwise, can begin before uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, in fact, with the 1916 uh, Brooklyn Dodger team here as guests of President Branch Rickey of the Brooklyn Ball Club, uh, there's been a great deal of talk in which these players uh, used to remark that back in 1916 there were no, uh, no Sunday games that they played uh, while the team was at home. Um, the uh, late uh, mayor of New York, when he was uh, in the uh, House of Representatives at Auburn in New York, uh, Jimmy Walker, was the father of the uh, Sunday sports law, uh, he got the law through, and uh, the law stipulated that no sporting event could begin on Sunday afternoons in the state of New York before 2 o'clock. Therefore, all Sunday games are advertised at 2.05. And now, as the umpires walk up to home plate, manager Stengel comes out with the Yankee batting order, Captain Reese comes up for the Brooklyn batting order. Here is an important message to every one of you veterans listening in to the World Series broadcast today. 
Dear veterans, if you have held national service life insurance for three months or more on a policy taken out before the end of 1947, that's on a policy taken out before the end of 1947, you are eligible for a special dividend. The amounts will vary, but many veterans will receive as much as $300. Obtain your application from any post office. Fill it out and mail it properly to the Veterans Administration. Now, don't fill out more than one application and don't write to the Veterans Administration about your application. Checks will start going out after the first of next year. Now in that final lull before the storm. While well, things are still quiet, which they rarely are at Ebbets Field, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hear the World Series exclusively over WOR. See it on WOR TV Channel 9. WOR and WOR FM New York. The meeting at home plate, six gentlemen in their blue sedges, and two in what is called in the trade monkey suits. Reese handing over uh, his batting cards, Casey Stingle handing over his. Uh, each team representative comes up to home plate with three batting cards, and they must be identical. One set of cards, that's one from uh, each team, is kept by the plate umpire. Then each uh, team representative keeps his own batting card and one of the other fellows. So they have to be made out in triplicate. Rex Barney, who will start for Brooklyn, and will take them on uh, sooner than will Rashi of the invading Yankees. Barney has finished his warming up and has gone into the dugout, sitting down for a last-minute blow. And Rashi is just uh, polishing off. He's just throwing uh, sort of loosely back and forth, just getting the feel in his arm just right. There's a final refinement going on at home plate over ground rules. Uh, Big Cal Hubbard, who back at the plate today, who will act as the umpire in chief, is uh, straightening out something to make certain that Reese and Stengel understand. Of course, anything about this ballpark and Stengel doesn't understand, uh, he never will. He was entered as a player. In fact, uh, he played on the first Brooklyn team that ever performed in this park. It was an exhibition game against the Yankees uh, just before the season opened in 1913. Reese uh, and Hubbard are uh, going over some point of ground rules, and Phoebe's pointing out towards center field. It's what it is. I don't know. It's not very serious because George Barr grins and walks away. <laughs> Reese is just needling somebody, and Stengel grins. And by the way, Casey Stengel uh, was very pleased to be honored by the folks from Oakland, California. Uh, Casey, uh, you know, managed Oakland to a championship last year in the Pacific Coast League. And uh, before the ball game began, uh, City Commissioner Frank J. Ewell of, of Oakland presented a proclamation in, uh, from uh, the City Commission commending Stengel for the fine job that he's done in managing the Yankees to the American League pennant this year. So, the Dodgers are calm. The Yankees are quietly and serenely confident. The umpires are now scattered to their six defensive posts. One lone groundkeeper is finishing off a smooth place where Rashi was last warming up. Now, no one is on the field but the umpires, and now the Dodgers take the field, and the battle will be joined. So, Brooklyn goes to the field, manager Shatton uh, told his ball club, reminded them that they did everything the hard way all season long, that in the important series after important series, especially with the Cardinals, the Dodgers would inevitably lose the opening game of the series, then have to come back to take the next two to keep going. And uh, Casey Stengel, of course, doesn't have to say anything. He just starts rashy, and the, the ball game plays. Now, in a moment, we'll have the national anthem. It's a minute after 2 o'clock. The announcement is made that Miss Gladys Gooding will play and sing the Star Spangled Banner.
all the preliminary words have been written and have been spoken, it is now a time for the actual playing performances on the playing field and the play-by-play -play words of Mel Allen as we uh, send you game five. And Gillette is very pleased to have this in its cavalcade of sports. Mel, let me say again while you can hear it, it's great to work with a major league broadcaster. And here you are. Hello there, everybody. That goes double with me, Red. This program comes to you by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball. It's intended only for the private use of our audience. Any publication or reproduction of this program and commercial use of the program is prohibited. Roy Campanella's throw down to Jackie Robinson at second base. The ball whipped back around the infield and comes to rest in the glove of Rex Barney, who performed in the 1947 World Series with the Dodgers in three games. He won eight in the third innings. I checked that he went six and two-thirds innings. Lost one game, did not win any, as Speck Shea beat him two to one in the fifth game of the 1947 setup. And so the right-hander, young right-hander, 23 years of age, for the Dodgers, starts the windup, pitching to Phil Rizzuto, and the first pitch is outside for ball one. Rex Barney from Omaha, Nebraska. I call him 23. I should have said 24. He'll be 25 on December the 19th. In comes the delivery. Rizzuto takes outside again for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The scooter has a batting average in the series of 200. He's had three hits and 15 times at bat. All singles. Johnny Jorgensen's in close at third in the event of the bunt. Pee Wee Reese over toward the third base hole. Barney delivers outside again for ball three. And now Johnny Jorgensen moves over from third base out to the mound to talk to Barney. And Carl Erskine sticks his head out of the Dodger dugout, starts to go down to the bullpen, is immediately called back for a moment. Now he's taking the walk down to the Brooklyn bullpen. He's trotting down now. You've got Jorgensen third, Reese short, Robinson second, Hodges first. Rackley left, Snyder center, Hermansky right, Campanella catching, Rex Barney pitching three balls, no strikes to Rizzuto, and it's outside and low, ball four, and the scooter is on. Jackie Robinson trots over from second base now to talk to Barney. Tommy Henrik steps in. He's had four hits and 15 times at bat in the series for a 267 average. There have not been too many robust hitters in the series, it being predominantly a pitcher's classic this year. Although yesterday the boys sort of broke loose a little. Outfield around toward right for Henrik. Stands deep in the batter's box in close to the plate. The pitch... Inside for a ball is a curve. Cal Hubbard almost went up with a hand. He was watching that one very closely. The ball broke, almost had the inside edge, but did not quite get it. You got Jorgensen about 10 feet off the third baseline in on the edge of the infield grass with three, three strikes to the left, the second in halfway. Now the pitch, and Henrik takes outside for ball two, and Rex Barney is starting out in very wild fashion. Time is called as Roy Campanella goes to the mound, and Captain Pee Wee Reese comes in from short. And there's action about to begin in the Dodger bullpen. A little conference around the mound, trying to settle Barney down. Reese goes back to short. Campanella comes back to the plate. Milton Stock pokes his head out of the Dodger dugout to see that action is going on in the bullpen. Rex Barney all set to pitch two and nothing to Tommy Henrik. Here it is, and it's in there for a call strike, a throw down to first, Rizzuto back. That's the first strike that Barney's gotten in in seven pitches. Jack Banter, a right-hander, throwing the bullpen. Two and one, the count on Henrik. Jorgensen is backed up from the edge of the infield grass, not looking for the bunt. Barney ready, throws. Henrik takes low, ball three, three and one. The outfield around toward right. Jackie Robinson's halfway between first and second and about three steps in from the edge of the outfield grass with Gil Hodges holding against Rizzuto. Henrik has a look at Frank Rossetti coaching at third for any sign. Bill Dickey coaching at first. Rizzuto might be off and running with this pitch in the event Casey tries to uh, decide to put on the hit and run. There goes Phil. The pitch is low inside. Ball four. Henrik walks. Rizzuto holds up. eases into second. And now coming up is Yogi Berra. Berra has had one out of 11 in the series in the three games in which he's participated. And thus you have almost a reproduction of the first inning of yesterday 
with the first two Yankees getting on base. Only on yesterday, they were on uh, first and third. Rizzuto moving to third on Henrik Single. And then came the play on which Barra hit into the unusual double play. The retired Rizzuto, who was on third, and Henrik, who had rounded second. Yogi squares away. Jorgensen in on the edge of the infield grass. Ten feet off third. Rizzuto moves off second. Henrik off first. Here's the pitch. Yogi takes inside. Ball one. He bluffed a bunt. Jack Banta. Angular right-hander throwing in the bullpen for Brooklyn. Outfield for Barra. Round toward right. Gil Hodges has moved in to the edge of the infield grass. Looking for the bunt, though he hasn't charged. Neither has Jorgensen, who will try to anchor it third if he can to let Barney handle the bunt if Yogi is bunting. Runners lead away. Here's the pitch. Yogi shortens up, takes a strike. And Campanella started to throw down to second as Reese broke for the bag, but he didn't throw. He cocked his arm, but he didn't let the ball loose. One ball, one strike. So the situation is boiling here in the first inning. This is a key man as Rex Barney is trying to settle down. Has worked the count to one and one. Rizzuto has a short lead off second. Henrik off first. Now Hodges is in behind Henrik. He's not looking for the bunt. Here's the pitch. Barra swings at a curve and misses. Strike two. He went for a bad pitch that was low inside. One and two the count on Yogi. Rex Barney. Who walked the first two men, Rizzuto and Hendricks, now ahead of the next man, Barra, the count of one and two. And of course, Hodges is halfway back at first now, definitely not looking for any bunt. Two strikes on the batter. Reese halfway at short, three strikes to the left of the bag. The stretch, the pitch, swung on, grounded foul down behind the bag at first and behind Bill Dickey and into the Dodger bullpen. The ball retrieved along the right field line by the alternate umpire, Ed Hurley of the American League. George Barr of the National League station down the left field line. You've got Rackley in left, Snyder in center, Hermansky in right. That's the Dodger outfield today. They're playing bear to pull. Barney gets his sign from Campanella. Now he takes his stretch. Rizzuto has his lead off second. Henrik off first. Here's the pitch, and Barra takes low into the dirt, and the ball is nicely blocked by Campanella. Keep it from being a wild pitch, and the count is 2-2. Barney has a world of stuff, but he, like the Yankees' Tommy Byrne, will have a difficulty controlling it. And when they can have their control down pretty well, they're tough to handle. Not easy to hit, in other words. Two balls, two strikes. Top of the first inning, Rizzuto on second. Henrik on first. Reese trying to slip in behind Rizzuto. Now he backs away. Here's your pitch. And it's inside for ball three. Full count on Yogi. Three and two. That pitch was very close to the inside corner. Possibly could have had it, but probably was below the knees. Or at least it just missed it. Full count now on Barra. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. Rizzuto on second. Henrik on first. And young Rex Barney getting ready for an important pitch. They're all important in the World Series, but particularly is it important at this moment. There's Reese as it's going down to second, trying to pick off play, and the ball's off for Reese's glove, and he stumbles over the umpire, Passarella, and going to third is Rizzuto on to second, Henrik, and the ball is relayed into the plate by center fielder Duke Snyder on a peculiar play. As they attempted the pickoff, Barney whirled through to Reese. Rizzuto was getting back to the bag. The ball was high. Reese went up for the ball, and as he twisted around, Art Passarella, the umpire, is there to call the play, and Reese tumbled over him and could not get up off the ground, and there was the shortstop of the Dodgers and Art Passarella both on the ground and the Snyder racing in to back up and keep uh, Rizzuto from scoring. So it is an error charged to Barney on the throw, enabling Rizzuto to go to third and Henrik to second. So you have runners on second and third, three and two on Barra, and now Barney will take the full windup. Around comes the right arm, the pitch, and Barra swings and grounds it foul off to the right of the plate. The ball skips up into the box just to the right of the uh, commissioner's box. Souvenir for a World Series fan. Full count then on Barra. Barney trying to help himself out of the jam on that pickoff play, but it didn't work, and resulted in an error charge to him, putting two men in scoring position, nobody down. And the 3-2 pitch on its way, and Barra swings and misses, strike three. How about that? 
Ortiz strikes out Barra. And now here comes Joe DiMaggio. Joe's had one out of 14 in the series. As Red told you, the story of Joe DiMaggio is one that hasn't been told too much in this series. He hasn't had a very good series for a great star. But then one of the reasons perhaps that not too much has been said about Joe's failure to hit is the fact that he got out of his sick bed to finish the last two games of the year and is still not well. And here he is, Rex Barney facing the clipper. And the pitch. High, ball one. And the infield on the right side is in. The left side deep as the Dodgers play it in a split-up defensive situation. That is to say, Jorgensen is halfway back at third, three, four feet off the line. Reese deep at short over toward the gap. But there is Jackie Robinson on the edge of the infield grass. And Hodges just a step or two away from the edge of the infield grass. Demad swings and sends a long drive to deep center field. There's Snyder racing way back toward the wall. He leaps up and grabs it. Tagging up and scoring after the catch of Rizzuto and racing the third after the catch is Hendrick. As Duke Snyder leaped up against the deep center field wall to 393 foot sign to haul in the drive. DiMaggio gets a hand as he comes into the Yankee dugout, and Casey Stengel pops his head out and claps his hands and says, Nice going, Joe. And Duke Snyder made a sensational catch as he went all the way back to the deep center field wall and leaped and caught the ball above his head. And now here's Bobby Brown with two down, one run in, one to nothing, New York. Henry on third, the pitch to Bobby, in there for a call strike. That's about as good a ball as DiMaggio has hit in the series. And had he been able to pull it just a little bit, it would have been up into the seats. But is almost into dead center field. Bobby Brown, left-hand hitter. Chokes that bat. Barney throws. Bobby swings and hits one right back through the middle. Out of a second in the center for a base hit. Hendrick comes in to score. Up for the ball is Snyder. Off the grass. Throws on into Robinson. And the Yankees lead two to nothing. As Bobby Brown continues his spectacular World Series hitting. Three for three in 1947. And he has had in this series... Three for eight. Now four for nine with that base hit. So a total of seven out of 12 in World Series uh, competition for Bobby Brown. And that's Bobby's fourth RBI in the series, and he leads everybody in that respect. Now here's Gene Woodling, left-hand hitter. The delivery inside the knees, ball one. Two to nothing, favor the Yankees. And to refer to a situation that we always do, a manager's headache. Those bases on balls. That started the Yankees off in this inning. Barney stretches, checks his runner, the pitch. Right in there for a call strike, a throw down to first, not in time. Brown sliding back in. Hodges not bothering to tag Bobby because the throw's a little late. Gene Woodling the batter. Cliff Mapes on deck, two runs in. Top of the first inning. Barney again ready, has a look. Here's the pitch. Curve and is just outside for a ball, two and one. Banta still continuing to limber up in the bullpen, not throwing too hard now. He's almost ready in the event he's needed. Barney seems to be settling down a bit. There's a quick throw to first. Back in time is Bobby Brown. Quick move over. When I said Barney seems to be settling down a bit, I mean uh, insofar as his wildness is concerned. The right-hander throws. The pitch is swung on. Foul tip. Skips off the mid of Campanella into the chest protector in behind it of Cal Hubbard. You know, in the American League, the umpires wear the chest protector outside their jacket in the National League inside. Cal Hubbard working his second turn behind the plate in this series. He opened it up at the stadium. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two in. Two to nothing, New York. Top of the first inning. Outfield around toward right for Woodling. Stands in close to the plate. Barney throws. Pitches inside. Ball three, three and two. Roy Campanella, who has caught a beautiful series, taking his time for uh, returning that ball to Barney. The Yankees have all remarked about uh, what a swell backstop Campanella is. How swell he can throw and how he keeps all the base runners on their toes. And sometimes on their stomachs. The pitch is inside as Brown was running on the 3-2 pitch with two outs. It's ball four. Woodling walks. Third pass given up in this inning by Barney. And now coming to bat is Cliff Mapes. Mapes, who's had one out of seven in the series. 
Left hand hitter. Brown on second, Woodling on first. Two runs in. Two men out. Infield is shaded around toward first. Rex Barney delivers. Mapes takes curve over for a call strike. Came in with a fastball motion and delivered a slow curve with it. Jorgensen, the third baseman, is halfway back, six, eight feet off the line. Reese over toward second. He's about three strides to the left of the bag. Brown moves off second. Woodling off first. Here's your pitch. Swung on and foul tip for strike two. Ball skips out of the mid of Campanella. Mar Brackley is over toward left center. Duke Snyder into right center. And Gene Hermansky is shading right center more than he would be the right field line. Not looking for a mapes to pull too sharply. Runners move away from first and second base is the pitch. And it's inside to uh, Mapes. Right around the letters for ball one. One and two. Ball players are not prone to take too much of a toehold against a pitcher who is inclined to be a bit wild as is Barney or as is Tommy Byrne of the Yankees when he's working. The one-two pitch. It's just outside for ball two. Curve. Mighty close. Barney figured he might have had the strike on that one. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two in, two on. Rex walks around the mound. Now he comes back on. Campanella gives him the sign and sets up the target. Brown moves off second, woodling off first. Hodges very deep at first. The stretch, the pitch. Swung on, it's a high foul going out of play to the left of the plate and out of the ballpark. The wind seems to be blowing from right out toward left. So that at the present time, any ball hit up into the air in the direction of left field would be aided by the wind. Held up, hit out into right field to some extent. Once again, Barney set, checks his two runners, leading off first and second. The pitch, curve, and it's inside for ball three. Three and two. Two pitches that Barney has delivered. Two of the pitches that Barney has delivered to uh, Mapes have been very close. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Reese uh, came in a few steps, honored something to Barney. Brown on second, Woodling on first. will be off and running with this pitch. They're being two down and three and two on the hitter. Stretch by Barney. There go the runners. The pitch is strike three. Call the curve that broke over. For the Yankees, then, two runs. One hit. No errors for the Dodgers. Two Yankees left on. Uh, one error for the Dodgers as we double check. That was on Barney's attempted pickoff at second when he threw the ball over Reese's head. Two runs, one hit, one error, and two men left on. And the score at the end of the first half of the first inning. Yankees two, Dodgers nothing. Draw your chairs up, close fans, while I put you next to the hottest razor buy you ever heard about. It's the sensational Gillette Super Speed Razor set that's keeping clerks on the hop and sales zooming in stores all over the country. A, you get a fine precision-made Gillette one-piece razor that changes blades instantly and skims off whiskers easy as pie. B, you get a handy Gillette dispenser holding ten factory-sharp Gillette blue blades with the longest-lasting edges ever produced. C, you get a handsome modern styrene travel case that's an eye-opener for convenience and serviceability. Yes, and get this. All three, razor, dispenser, and styrene case, a big dollar seventy-five value, are yours for just one dollar. Better hurry. Retail stocks are getting low. Ask for the World Series Special, the modern Gillette Super Speed Razor set, at your nearest store soon. Quick. Last half of the first inning. Vic Brashy goes to the mound for the Yankees, making his second start of the series and working with two days rest. Defeated in the second game of the World Series, one to nothing by the Dodgers and Preacher Rowe. As Rashi gave up seven hits and one run and lost the ball game one to nothing. The right hander pitching to Pee Wee Reese, right hand batter, throws and it's right in there for a call strike. The
The official scorer has informed us that both uh, runs for the Yankees were earned in the first inning. Here's a pitch swung on, hit sharply to short. One hop. Rizzuto grabs it. Throws over to Henrik in time. There's one away. Reese swung at a curveball. Hit it solidly, but right at Rizzuto on one hop. And Phil retired him. Johnny Jorgensen steps in now. Reese had had four hits in 14 times at bat in the series for a 286 average. Johnny Jorgensen in three games has had two out of eight. Left hand hitter, Rashi delivers. Fast ball in there for a call strike. Bobby Brown's in close at third. Rizzuto's over towards second base. About two strides to the left of the bag as we look out onto the field. Jerry Coleman halfway between first and second, back on the edge of the outfield grass, and Henrik near the line. Big Rashi getting his sign now. Taking a little time. Now he goes to work into the windup. Round comes the right arm. The pitch is swung on a grounder. Hit the third. Bobby Brown is left up with it. Fires across to Henrik in time, and they're two away. Two up and two down. And now here's Duke Snyder. The Duke, one of the hitting disappointments in the series for the Dodgers. He's had the one hit and 16 times at bat. But still a fellow that Bert Schotten's got all the confidence in the world in, and rightfully so, because when he connects, he can send them. Vic Rashi's first pitch to the Duke, left-hand hitter. In there for a call strike, slow curve, broke over just below the shoulders. Robinson, or rather Snyder, is the kind of a guy who can break up a ball game for you at any given moment. Robinson is on deck. Here's your pitch. Outside, ball one, one and one. And they play the Duke around toward right. Brown's in fairly close to third, giving the bag about a 10-foot berth. Rizzuto about a stride to the left of second. The 1-1 pitch on its way. The left-hand batter cuts and misses at a curve that broke off into the dirt and skipped in behind Barra. One and two the count. Duke a little over anxious. Jackie Robinson's on deck. Jerry Coleman, the second baseman, kicking at the dirt. He's back on the edge of the outfield grass and at a point halfway between first and second bases with Hendrick deep three feet off the first baseline. Melton Stock coaching at third, Jake Pittler at first for the Dodgers. Now the one-two pitch on its way from Rasha to Snyder. Swung on and missed, strike three, and he's out of there. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And Snyder goes down striking out for the sixth time in the series. DiMaggio had struck out five times, as had Snyder before the start of today's game. So the two center fielders were both running parallel courses. And now the Dodgers' symphony band are serenading one of the owners of the Dodgers, Waller O'Malley, evidently his birthday, as they are playing happy birthday. And as they conclude, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Here, the World Series exclusively over WOR. See it on WOR TV, Channel 9. WOR and WOR FM, New York. Going into the top of the second inning, Jerry Coleman, Vic Rashi, and then Phil Rizzuto will be coming up for the Yankees. It's 2 to nothing, New York, down to the first inning of play. Spider Jorgensen comes in to say something to Rex Barney. Crowd sitting back rather quiet at the moment. A lot of folks out here today who were unable to get here during the weekdays. A lot of working people can't get out to the ball games except on Sunday. Notice Lou Boudreaux, skipper of the Indians, who won last year out here. There's a pitch right in there for a call strike as Barney cut loose with a fastball right over. Jerry Coleman, right-hand hitter. He's had three out of 15 in the series and has been playing a fine defensive game. Chokes that bat three inches or so in fairly close to the plate. Open stance, knees bent, leans from the waist a bit. Barney throws, fastball swung on, hit high up into the air in the short left. Reese goes out, waves Rackley off, Pee Wee under it. And he makes the catch about 15 feet off the left field line, about 25 feet behind third base. So Coleman pops out to Reese in short left. And now coming up is Vic Rashi. Vic bats him right-handed. Outfield straight away. 
Infield shaded round toward third just a bit. And in a normal setup, here's the pitch. Just outside, ball one, fastball. Yanks two, Dodgers nothing. Second inning. Bill Rizzuto's in the batter circle. Rex Barney, the right-hander, throws. Fastball, and it's outside for ball two to Rashi. Two-nothing count. Barney aims this one over. It's in there for a call strike. Fastball. Two balls, one strike. Now the delivery to Bick is inside and a little high, just around the shoulders. Three and one the count. Barney gets his sign from Campanella, getting ready to work. Rashi stands way away from the plate. The three-one pitch. Right over for call strike two. Barney has got a good fastball, really alive. I recall two years ago in the World Series when Billy Southworth came up here talking to Red and me, and he said, there's a fellow I'd like to have on my ball club. He's got a lot of stuff. Here's your pitch. Strike. No, did he? You no, know, it's ball four. Hubbard's starting to go up with a hand, and he indicated as the crowd yells that he was merely pointing down to first base. The only way that we have of determining whether an umpire calls a strike or not is when he goes up with the right hand. And Hubbard did go up with the right hand, but he indicated again after that, that's the reason we called it the third strike, as the crowd yelled, he said, I, with his gesture, he raised his hand up and pointed to first base. He merely meant for him to go on down. So it was ball four. That's the fourth walk given up by Barney. Time is uh, called here for a moment. A little conference at the mound. Reese, Robinson, Barney, and Campanella. While uh, Vic Rashi adjusted his windbreaker. Now Rizzuto, who walked in the first inning and scored the first Yankee run. Awaits the pitch. He's a right-hand hitter. It's on its way, and it's outside. Ball one. And now Campanella turns and says something to Hubbard. Barely uh, discussing the situation a bit. Barney figures some of those pitches that were close should have been called strikes on some of these batters. Gil Hodges walked over a few paces from first. Now we're ready to continue. One out, one on, top of the second inning, 2 nothing, New York. Barney throws, Rizzuto takes a strike call, fastball in there. One ball, one strike, one out. Bill down on the end of the band a bit. Here's your pitch. It's Bunny down toward first. Hodges comes in, picks the ball up, and tags Phil out on the line as Rashi goes to second. Now, Phil will be credited with a sacrifice, though that was not actually his intention. He was bunning to get on with one out. He was hoping to bunt it to the right of the mound to make Robinson come in and field it, and Hodges get off the bag so that he could beat it out, but he bunted it right toward Gill. And the Dodger first baseman picked it up and retired Rizzuto unassisted. However, since it moved, Rashi down to second. It must be scored as a sacrifice, though that was not the intent. Now, here's Tommy Henry. At least that was not the sole intent. Frank Crosetti coaching there at third, hollering down to Rashi. He's watching Reese and Robinson for Vic as Vic watches Barney. Barney has the stretch. Here's the pitch, and Henry swings and sends a ground ball to backhanded nicely by Hodges. Flips to Barney, covering for the out. A beautiful play. Hodges backhanded that ball, which was hit into the hole between first and second, took a possible base hit away from Henrik, flipped to Barney, covering for the out. No runs for New York, no hits, no Dodger errors, one left on for the Yankees. Fans, Earl Torgerson, first baseman for the Boston Braves, is here watching the game with us. Earl, come in and say a few words to the folks. About Gillette Blue Blade? Can you name a better kind? You have me there, Mel. As far as I'm concerned, Gillette Blue Blades are absolutely top. Easy shaving? Not only that, but consistently good. You never find one that scrapes or pulls. 
fans by Gillette Blue Blades. And you'll go along with Earl Torgerson, I'm sure. Earl? Uh, have you uh, enjoyed the series thus far? Not very well. I'm too much of a Dodger fan now. That National League. I'm rooting for that National League. Well, I can appreciate that. Uh, Rex Barney, you batted against him a lot of times, haven't you? Yeah, he uh, has a world of natural ability. Should be a great pitcher. Well, getting that control down, of course, is his biggest problem, and he seems to be settling down just a little bit. Yeah, I hope he does. Earl, how's your hand? I know you got getting along all right now. It's a little stronger now. It's feeling better. You expect by the time spring training rolls around to be bitten ready again to go with the Boston uh, Braves? I hope so, Mal. Well, much obliged to you, Earl. All right, thank you very much. Earl Torgerson dropping in to visit with us for a little while. And now we're ready for the last half of the second inning. Jackie Robinson leads off for the Dodgers. Robinson's had two out of 12 in the series. He'll be followed by Hermansky and Hodges. Vic Brashy, the right hand into the windup throws. Robinson takes outside for a ball as he bluffed the bunt. Brought Brown charging in from third. Henrik is deep at first. And Jackie looks as if he's going to try to shove one out towards second. Jerry Coleman's only two strides to the right of second. Henrik near first. A lot of room in there. Here's your pitch. Swung on. Line right to Coleman as he leaps and grabs it. Jackie Robinson's blazing liner was hit just above Coleman's head, but it sank. It was a sinking liner and sank off to his left, and Coleman speared it glove-handed for a brilliant play, robbing uh, Jackie Robinson of a base hit. Now here's Gene Hermansky, left-hand hitter. Rashi throws. Gene takes a strike over the outside corner. It's a fastball. Bobby Brown's in close at third near the line. Rizzuto over towards second base. Coleman halfway between first and second and deep. Hendrick deep near the line. The outfield shaded around toward right. Two to nothing New York last half of the second inning. Vic Rashi goes to work. In comes the pitch. Gene Hermansky takes high for a ball. And the count is evened up now at one and one. Jake Pittler, as usual, walking up and down, coaching there at first. Gil Hodges on deck, going through his usual batting uh, or preceding his batting motions, adjusting his cap. Here's the pitch, and it's inside to Hermansky for ball two, two and one. Barra turns and asks Hubbard where the ball was. It was close. Two balls, one strike. Jerry Coleman just went over and uh, took Jackie Robinson's club, which is nearby, and tossed a little further back out on the grass in right field so it wouldn't be in his way. Now your 2-1 pitch. Swung on, pop foul off to the left of the plate and out of play. Ball going into the upper deck. And you've got a 2-2 count on Gene. Rashi fumbling around with a rosin bag. Has a new ball to work with. Working with two days rests, he's taking his time. And talking with fellows like Rogers Hornsby, for example, and other old-time baseball greats, they say that pitching with two days rest is not so rough, really. The 2-2 pitch. Curve is swung on. Drilled out in right center field. There's Mapes racing over, and he takes it for the out. Hermansky didn't get a good cut at that ball. If he'd have hit it solidly, it'd have gone a lot further. Hornsby said that most of it's in a pitcher's mind. And he referred back to the old days when uh, the pitchers used to work uh, very frequently with very little rest. Gil Hodges, right-hand hitter, awaits the delivery from Rashi. It's fastball over for a call strike. Two to nothing, favor of New York. Last the second inning, two down, nobody on. Hodges the batter, Mar Brackley on deck. Outfield toward left. Rashi throws, fastball misses the outside corner this time. The count is evened up at one and one. Big Gill, born from Petersburg, Indiana, who made the change from a catcher to a first baseman and has developed uh, amazingly rapidly and shows promise of becoming a very outstanding first baseman if he already hasn't done so. One ball, one strike, the count on him. Rashi into the windup. In comes the pitch. Swung on, hit sharply out to short. Rizzuto is right up with the ball. Fires the long way to Henrik, and it's in time for the out. Scooter showed a flash of his brilliance 
that has put him into contention for the most valuable player award in the American League this year as he raced to his right, took that ball deep over toward third and threw Hodges out. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And the score at the end of two innings, two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. With the Yankees owning the only hit in the ball game thus far. Now, as we move to the third, the Yanks will come up with Barra, DiMaggio, and Brown. It was good to see Ty Cobb out here and chat with him before the ball game. And he is among the most excited of all the fans here at this World Series. And in a measure, you wouldn't think that there was a fellow who went through World Series and a lot of the roughest and toughest ball games imaginable, a great competitor, and played uh, baseball for so many years, over 20 that you would figure that he'd take all this in stride, but he's one of the most excited fans out here. The Dodgers Symphony Band entertaining the crowd today. Top of the third inning, two to nothing. For you late tuners in, the Yankees got two runs in the first inning when Rex Barney started off in wild fashion, walking Rizzuto and Henrik. An attempted pickoff play at second. He threw the ball away. Rizzuto went to third and Henrik to second. And after Barra struck out, DiMaggio drove to Snyder to the center field wall to take his drive. Rizzuto scored after the catch and Brown singled Henrik home. Now here's Barra. Barney throws. Pitch it swung on hit back to the box on a hop. Rex takes it. Throws over to Hodges and Barra is out. Yogi went after that first pitch and bounces out to Gil Hodges. And hip, up comes Joe DiMaggio on whom Duke Snyder made a spectacular play in the first inning. Duke went all the way back to the center field wall, 393-foot mark, leaped high into the air, and took the ball up over his head. So the Clipper steps in, and Rex Barney starts to work on him. The right-hander fires, pitches inside at the belt for a ball. The outfield is around toward left. Gene Hermansky almost half-facing the right field line. He's way off of it. Third inning, one out. Nobody on. Two nothing, New York. The delivery swung on. Lined out to center. Here, Snyder coming in fast, and he makes a good hand catch to the ball. Sensationally. How about that? Duke Snyder, for the second consecutive time, robs DiMaggio of a base hit as he came racing in from deep center. And at top speed, reached down and about a foot or so off the ground, plucked DiMaggio's sinking blazing liner to rob him of a base hit for the second straight time Joe's been at bat. Brilliant play by the Duke. Now here's Bobby Brown, who takes a fastball low, little inside, ball one. The crowd roared its approval of the sparkling defensive maneuver of Duke Snyder. Duke probably figures, well, I'm center field and I haven't been hitting. I'm going to let DiMaggio have any either. Here's a pitch and it's weighing outside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. DiMaggio himself remarked, he said, I've got only one hit in the series, and that was what we term a bleeder, a little roller he beat out. And he says, uh, you hit a lot of them real hard and real deep, and they're caught. Here's your pitch. Inside to Bobby, almost hit him ball three. So he concluded and said, this is a funny game after all, isn't it? You can hit them a mile and they'll catch him. And then you can hit one five feet and beat them out. Brown single to center in the first inning to drive in the second Yankee run. It's 2 nothing New York, third inning, two outs. Rex Barney comes in with his pitch, and it's inside for ball four, and Brown walks. That's the fifth base on balls given up by Barney. And coming to bat is Gene Woodling. Woodling drew a base on balls in the first inning. Barney walked 10 men in the 47 World Series in the six and two thirds innings he pitched. But he had an earned run average of under three. The right hander throws right over for a call strike to Woodling. Fastball got plenty of the inside portion of the plate. Belt high. And he shade Woodling around toward right. Infield shaded around toward first. Hodges holding against Brown. Two down. In the event the Dodgers pull this one out of the fire and stay alive in the series, the scene will shift to Yankee Stadium for tomorrow. And in that event, we'll be back on the air at our usual time of 12.45 Eastern Standard Time.
Today we started an hour later than usual because of the New York state law. The pitch swung on, hit solidly to Robinson's right and out into the right center. There is Brown rounding second on his way to third. Snyder up with the ball. Whips his throw to third. Cut off by Reese Woodling holds first. It's a solid line single to uh, right center field. Jackie darted to his right as the ball hit the skin part of the infield. After starting out as a liner, but as he attempted to backhand it, he couldn't quite get to it, and he went on out there for the base hit. So the Yankees have runners on first and third, and that's their second hit off Barney. And the batter is Cliff Mapes, who took a third strike in the first inning. The left-hand batter swings and foul tips it at the plate, strike one. Barney delivered a curveball up there. One strike to count. Brown on third. Woodling on first. Hodges holding against Gene. Banta starts to work the bullpen again for Brooklyn. Rex Barney stretches, pitches, makes, takes outside for a ball. Fastball, it took off. Frank Forsetti has a look in at the dugout. See if Casey Stengel's got anything in particular on his mind. Frank uh, passes the signs along. Barney again ready, throws. Mapes started to swing and held up at a curve. It's inside, and Mapes, in his effort to hold up, fell away from the plate to his knees. Two balls, one strike. Brown on third and Woodling on first. The Yankees leading two to nothing. Third inning, two men down. The Dodgers' young right-hander. Looks in, gets his sign from Campanella again. He's ready, takes his stretch. Runners move off first and third. The pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. It was a breaking ball. And now Casey Stengel pops out of the Yankee dugout, hollers something at Cliff. One of Casey's favorite expressions, as all managers do have, just get a piece of the ball. Don't try to murder it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on, two nothing New York. Once again, the runners move away from first and third. The pitch, Mapes swings and fouls it off to the left of the plate. Ball goes back to the screen. Barney with a new ball to work with. Two balls, two strikes on Cliff Mapes. Brown on third, Woodling on first. Again, the right-hander has the stretch. Runners move the pitch. It's low inside for ball three. Barney looks in as if to say, mm -hmm. that was close, and it was. So you've got a full count on Mapes, and with two down, Brown on third will be playing it safe. Woodling on first will be off and running. Barney stretches. Woodling ready to go. There he goes. The pitch is outside. Ball four, and they're loaded up. The sixth base on balls given up by Barney. Brown is on third. Woodling is on second. Mapes is on first. Milton Stock pokes his head out of the Dodger dugout on orders from Bert Schott and to see how Banta is looking out there, warming up in the Dodger bullpen down the right field line. And the batter is Jerry Coleman. Jerry popped out in the second inning to Pee Wee Reese. Right-hand hitter. Casey Stengel again pops his head out of the Yankee dugout, located to the left of home plate, and hollers his usual expression. Get a piece of it, Jerry. He's a choke hitter. Chokes up on that bat about three inches or better, in close to the plate. Brown leads off third, Woodling off second, Mapes off first. The wind-up by Barney. In comes the pitch. Coleman takes outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. The outfield is about straight away, and there is Hermansky moving a couple of steps more over toward the right field line. Coleman uh, can hit that ball just where it's pitched. He'll pull it, he'll hit it straight away, he'll hit it to right. Rex Barney into the windup, in comes the pitch. Swung on, hit on the hole between third and short to left field. Brown scores, Woodling rounds third, digs for the plate. The ball bobbled momentarily by Rackley. His throw is back to second base. Mapes gets back there in time. It's a two-run single for Jerry Coleman. And the Yankees lead four to nothing, and out of the dugout comes Dodger pitching coach Clyde Sukforth. Jerry Coleman coming up with a clutch single to left, drive in two runs, scoring Brown and Woodling. And all this action has happened after there were two men out and nobody on. Again, the base on ball started it. 
with two down. Brown walked, Woodling singled, Mates walked, and Coleman singled to left. That's going to be all for Rex Barney, and Jack Batter will come onto the scene. So Jerry Coleman gets his fourth hit of the series. Driving in his second and third runs. There was Jerry Coleman's base clearing uh, double in the eighth inning of the final game of the season a week ago today against the Boston Red Sox. It gave the Yankees their margin that carried him through the ninth inning against Boston. So Barney leaves after having gone two and two-thirds innings, and the fans give him a hand. He, like Byrne, uh, is tough to hit, but wildness causes the trouble. Barney only allowed three hits, but he walked six. Struck out two men. And now Jack Banter comes on. Number 11, Jack Banter. Erskine is going to work in the bullpen for Brooklyn. Banter has been in two games previously. Working a total of three and a third innings in this series, allowing only two hits and giving up one walk, striking out two, and has not allowed any runs. So the right hander starts his warm up. It's four to nothing now, favor of New York, has uh, just concluded his uh, warm up pitches from the mound, and the first man he'll face will be Vic Rashi. Jack Banta. Six foot, 265 pounder from Hutchinson, Kansas. Goes to work with Mapes on second, Coleman on first. His delivery to Rashi is curb swung on for strike one. He looks at him, Vic swung at that ball after he's already in Campanella's mid. Look, I like couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted to or not. Rashi walked in the second inning. Two runs are in here in the third, four nothing, New York. Banner ready. Throws. Pitch swung on, hit through the short into left center field for a base hit. Mapes rounds third, comes in to score. The throw goes to second, and Coleman dives back into the bag as Vic Rashi smacked a solid single to Reese's left in the left center to drive in the third run of the inning for New York. Scoring Cliff Mapes. And it's 5 to nothing in favor of the Yankees. And now coming up is Phil Rizzuto as Gil Hodges goes over the mound to talk to Jack. Banta allowed a single in the ninth inning of the first game here in Brooklyn. The first man he faced when he came on in relief. Rizzuto swings and fouls a pitch off to the right of the plate. That also scored a run. He allowed a single to Coleman, the first man that he faced, and then was all right thereafter. That run, of course, is charged to Rex Barney. It was put on by him. Coleman's on second. Rashi on first, two down, three in, five nothing Yankees. Phil Rizzuto takes low for a ball, one and one. The scooter walked and sacrificed previously. He's not been charged with the time at bat in this ball game. Yankee pitchers have done pretty well helping themselves in the hitting department this series. There's a pitch inside. Rizzuto drops to the ground. Ball two. Two and one the count. All the damage done here in the third inning after two men were out. Nobody on. Brown walked. Woodling single. Mapes walked to load him up. Coleman single to drive in two out. Went Barney. In came Banner. Rashi greeted him with a single to score Mapes. Coleman's on second, Rashi on first. Two balls, one strike on Rizzuto. The right-hander for the Dodgers stretches, pitches. Rizzuto takes a curve outside for ball three. Three and one. Carl Erskine continues to limber up in the Dodger bullpen. Banner kicks the dirt out in front of the rubber. Gets his sign from Roy. Runners lead. Now the pitch, and it's in there for call strike two. Fastball, got plenty of the inside of the plate and around the letters. So with a full count on Rizzuto, three balls, two strikes, and with two outs, Coleman, who is on second, Rashi, who is on first, will be off and running with the pitch. Coleman and Rashi ready to go. 
There they go. The pitch swung on as a drive to left center field. Duke Snyder moves over to get under it, and he makes the catch. So eight men batted for New York. Three of them scored. Three hits. No Dodger errors, and two Yankees left on. The score at the end of two and a half innings, the Yankees five, the Dodgers nothing. Friends, you heard Earl Torgerson of the Boston Braves say Gillette Blue Blades are tops with him because they're always easy shaving, always consistently good. Now, folks, there are many reasons for that, including 71 separate inspections that assure absolutely uniform quality. Basically, however, Gillette Blue Blades are superior because they're infinitely sharper, smoother finished, and longer lasting. In short, they're made of steel that takes an edge and holds it. So they never break down prematurely like ordinary blades that scrape and pull. For extra convenience, at no extra cost, buy Gillette Blue Blades in the Gillette dispenser that zips them out unwrapped. It makes blade changing a cinch. Saves time and bother. You get 20 blades, 40 shaving edges for 98 cents, 10 blades for 49 cents. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever honed. Vic Rashi taking his time coming out of the Yankee dugout to the mound. He was on the bases. Gives us time to uh, identify ourselves. And so we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. World Series exclusively over WOR. See it on WOR TV Channel 9, WOR and WOR FM New York. This is Mel Allen speaking to you from Ebbets Field, Red Barber, and I very happy to bring you this World Series, which is the 11th consecutive one brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. And Jim Britt doing the television, Renee Canizares beaming it to our Latin American neighbors. And now in the last of the third inning, first pitch is in there for a call strike to Marvin Rackley, a left-hand batter. Marv, a 5'10", 170-pounder from Walhalla, South Carolina. Rashy throws. It swung on, fouled off the chest protector of Cal Hubbard as he got by Vera for strike two. Five to nothing, favor of New York, last of the third inning. This broadcast is also being heard around the world through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our troops, our boys and girls in service, wherever they may be stationed. Rashi studies Barra sign, going to work. Around comes the right arm, in comes the pitch, and it is swung on and foul tipped but into the mid of Barra for strike three. We had to hold up and wait to see if Barra held on to the ball, as did Cal Hubbard, before he would call him out. And now here's Roy Campanello. Rashi's second strikeout in this ball game. Is sixth in the series. Roy Campanella, right hand batter. Rashi delivers fastball just outside, ball one. Campanella's had three for 12, including a home run in the series for Brooklyn. Outfield around toward left, infield shaded well around toward third, brown deep, five feet off the line, resumed over toward the gap, the pitch, right over for a call strike, evens up the count now, one and one. One ball, one strike. One out, last of third. New York five, Brooklyn nothing. Yankees leading games three to one. Here's your one-one service. Campanella takes fastball outside for ball two, two and one. In the game that Rashi pitched against the Dodgers at the stadium, second game of the series, he used quite a number of curveballs. He has been featuring primarily fast stuff so far today. Now the 2-1 pitch. Swung on, hit sharply down the third baseline by Brown into the left field corner. Woodling goes over into the corner, chases the ball up with it. Fires to second base. There's Campanella going in. The throw is toward third, and Campanella's on second with a double. Gene Woodling 
after he fielded that ball, we were watching Campanella and figuring with him to be throwing to second. But instead, he fired toward third. It caught Brown a little bit off guard, and it got by him, but Barra was backing up. And it's a double for Campanella, the first hit given up by Rashi. Jack Banta is going to come up to hit for himself. Jerry Coleman's over to talk to Rashi. That was the fifth Dodger double of this series. Rashi throws to Banta, left hand hitter. It's in there for a call strike. Banta is uh, figured to be only a fair hitter as a pitcher, but anytime a man's up there swinging a bat, you got to be wary of him. The curve is swung on, a ground ball hit to Henrik. He's up with it. Outruns Banta to the bag. Going to third is Campanella. They're two down. And coming up is Pee Wee Reese. Banta grounds out to Henrik unassisted. Rashi ran over to cover, but Henrik said, I'll take him, and did. Now we go to the top of the Brooklyn order. And here's Pee Wee Reese. Grounded to Rizzuto in the first inning. Hitting a sharp one hopper to the scooter. Brown moves in close at third. Ready to move in on a top ball. Not necessarily figuring Reese to be bunting with two outs, but then you always have to watch every possibility, whether it be the unexpected or not in baseball. Campanella on third, two down. Here's the pitch to Reese. Outside, ball one. Spider Jorgensen on deck. Outfield shaded toward left for Reese. Stands in fairly close to the plate. Slightly open stance. Holds the bat down to the end of the handle. Pretty much. Rashi starts his windup. Around comes the right arm. In comes the pitch. Strike call. A fastball in there just above the knees. And the count is now even up at one and one. Reese wants Cal Hubbard to have a look at the ball. And Cal gives a new one to Barra and tosses the one that uh, Rashi just had out of the game. Might have been discolored. Ball players figures tough enough to see those pitches coming up there without pitcher throwing one that might have been uh, stained by hitting the grass or being discolored through the rubbing up process or getting into the dirt one way or another. One ball, one strike, two down. Campanella on third, last of the third. Five nothing, New York. In comes the pitch. Reese swings, fouls it off to the right of the plate, out of play, way back into the upper deck. And the count is one and two. This has been just about the warmest day that we have had in the series. A lot of blue upstairs, patches of white. Maybe some clouds just in behind us where the sun is because it's not out too strongly at the moment. And as we speak, it fades away almost altogether. Here's your pitch, swung on a ground ball, hit in the hole between first and second on the right field for a base hit. Campanella comes in to score, mates up for the ball, flips to Reese and Reese to Rizzuto, and Reese is on with a run-producing single to right field. So the Pee Wee came through in the clutch. He's one of your great money ball players. Getting his fifth hit of the series and driving in his second run. Hit the ball to the opposite field, on the ground, in between first and second, where the Yankees were least expecting them to hit. It's now a 5-1 to one ball game, and here is Spider Jorgensen, left-hand hitter up, the stretch by Rashi, the pitch, swung on, it's a high pop-up, out back of second. Rizzuto is under the ball, waiting for it to come down, Reese running, and Phil makes the catch for the out to end the inning. One run for Brooklyn, two hits, no Yankee errors, one left on for the Dodgers, and the score at the end of three innings... And the totals, the Yankees, five runs, four hits, no errors, five left on. Brooklyn, one run, two hits, one error, and one man left on. Red? Yes, ma'am? In all the years that you've been watching that great guy, great performer, Pee Wee Reese, I guess you've seen him come through in the clutch many a time. Well, Reese and Rizzuto have uh, had shortstop given us uh, all that you'd ever expect to see in the World Series at that position. And uh, both also have been... Uh, very well up at the plate, and they have run bases very well. Uh, Frank Frisch, uh, last evening I happened to bump into him, 
And, uh, of course, uh, he's been an infielder himself and uh, managed ball clubs, played in more World Series games than anybody else. And his eye has been taken. Of course, he admits to being an old broken-down infielder. Now he watches infielders first. But he was talking about the work of Rizzuto and Reese. And I think, actually, that uh, few fans appreciate uh, either one as much as they should because neither Rizzuto nor Reese have any uh, eccentricities. They, they try and make everything look easy. Uh, they place very smoothly. In fact, uh, as Brett Schotten says, a race should apply to both. Uh, they are ringers, Mel. In other words, they're pros. That's right. <laughs> as we go to the fourth inning, Yankees five, Dodgers one. Tommy Henrik, Yogi Berra, and Joe DiMaggio are coming up for New York. Jack Banta, right-hander, throws to Henrik. Curve inside, ball one. For you late tuners in, Rex Barney was the starting pitcher for Brooklyn. Went two and two-thirds innings, gave up three hits, and was out of there. In comes the pitch now. Swung on and missed by Henrik as he went all the way on that one. All the runs that the Yankees have scored are charged to Barney. Banna throws, change up, and it's outside. Ball two, two and one. Outfield swung way around toward right for Henrik. Jorgensen about a dozen feet off the third baseline. Four steps away from the edge of the infield grass. Reese about three strides to the left of second. Here's your pitch. Swung on by Henrik. A ground ball hit to Robinson. Going to his right up with it. Throws over to Hodges. Henrik is out. Tommy Henrik grounding out. Robinson to Hodges. Second to first. Here's Yogi Berra. The St. Louis lad struck out in the first inning. Bounced out to the pitcher in the third. Yogi bemoans the fates that cost him an injury on his left thumb. There's a pitch that's outside for a ball. And uh, he remarked that he was sorry that his thumb hurt him so because he's had a lot of good pitches to, to hit but hadn't been able to swing hard on him, he said. Banner delivers. Yogi takes inside. A little low. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. One out. Fourth inning. Yankees five, Dodgers one. Outfield, infield set up. Same for Barra as for Henrik. Right-hander Jack Banta comes in with pitch that's outside the curveball. Three nothing to count. Banta to the Rosen bag gives it a touch, wipes his hand across the letters of the uniform. Anyway, for that three nothing pitch, aims it over the plate, and it is in there for the call strike. Three and one. Gil Hodges deep at first, and almost on top of that first baseline. Jackie Robinson halfway between first and second and back deep. Now the 3-1 pitch from Banner to Barra. Swung on, lined right to Hodges for out number two. Two up and two away, and here's Joe DiMaggio, who twice has been the victim of spectacular catches by center fielder Duke Snyder. In the first inning, Duke went to the wall and straight center field, deep center field, the 393-foot sign leaped and caught DiMaggio's drive over his head. Here's your delivery inside to Joe for a ball. The last time that DiMaggio was up, he drilled a smart liner into center, and Snyder came running in at top speed and gloved it about a foot off the ground. Banner throws. DiMaggio takes low outside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes, two outs, fourth inning. New York five, Brooklyn one. Bobby Brown on deck. Outfield is swung around toward left. Infield shaded well around toward third. Joe with that classic stance of his bat cock up off his right shoulder on the next pitch. Swings and sends a long drive. It stays fair. Go all the way. It is going. It is going. It is gone. Joe made sure this time nobody was going to make a spectacular catch, and the boys greet him because he's had a rough series in the base hit department, and the entire team practically came out and met him in front of the dugout and patted him on the back. Here's Bobby Brown, strike one call over the inside corner. Joe made sure that this time nobody was going to rob him. Hit a high, towering drive into the lower left field seats, 
that just did go into the right of the foul pole as that ball was hooking. Now the pitch to Brown. Strike two call over the inside corner. The ball cleared the 348 foot mark. And yet he was out when he drove one nearly 400 feet, 393 feet to be exact, in straightaway center. That's DiMaggio's sixth World Series homer. This is the eighth series in which he has participated. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three for Bobby Brown. And Campanello flipped the ball down to Jorgensen at third, though it was the third out. It shows you that sometimes the power of concentration in a World Series will do uh, certain things to certain fellows. Strike three. One run for New York, one hit, no errors for the Dodgers, nobody left on, and a hand for DiMaggio. And the crowd uh, beats him going out into center field. And the score at the end of three and a half innings, the Yankees six, the Dodgers one. Last half of the fourth inning, Duke Snyder leads off of the Dodgers, left-hand batter, struck out in the first inning, rashy pitches, Duke takes a curve over for a call strike. Jackie Robinson on deck, Hermansky to follow. There was a wild rumor that spread briefly before the ball game concerning DiMaggio, but it was quickly scotched that he was back in the hospital with 103 degree fever. Here's a pitch swung on him, missed strike two, as Duke cut hard. That was one story that was easy to trace down and scotch in a hurry because all he had to do was go down to the Yankee dressing room when the team arrived, and there was Joe with his son, Joe Jr., Joe putting on his uniform. The right-hander comes in with his pitch, and it's swung on and missed. Strike three. And Snyder goes down, striking out for the seventh time in the series. Now Jackie Robinson steps in. Robbed of a base hit in the second inning by Jerry Coleman. On a sinking liner that Jerry gloved. Outfield shifts around toward left, shades around toward third on the infield. Brown in close to third in the event of a bunt or top roller. Big crash into the windup throws. Strike call, fastball through there. New York six, Brooklyn one, last the fourth. Robinson stands deep in the batter's box, just a little way away from the plate. Rashi's delivery, curb swung on, hit right back through the middle, out over second in the center for a base hit. Joe DiMaggio comes in, scoops the ball up off the green carpet, throws in the second to Rizzuto, and Robinson holds on at first with a single to center. There was a curveball that he hit, and he was just waiting for it. Hit it right back through the middle. That's the third hit off Rashi. And now coming to bat is Gene Hermansky, who flied out to Mapes in the second inning. Left-hand batter. Bobby Brown about five feet off third, two steps away from the edge of the infield grass. Rizzuto three steps to the left of second in halfway. Now your pitch. Swung on. It's a high fly ball out into short left. Woodling trots in toward short under the ball. Rizzuto hollers, take it, Gene. He does. Robinson halfway to second turns and shoots back to first. Sir Hermansky flies out to Woodling in short left. And now coming to bat is Gil Hodges, who grounded to short in the second inning. Tommy Henry Collins to Rashi. I'm going to play halfway, or I'm going to play not on the bag, rather, against Robinson, but in behind him. But now Henrik moves in and has a look at Casey Stengel in the Yankee dugout to see where he wants him to play. Meantime, Gil Hodges, right-hand hitter, steps in, stands away from the plate, fairly deep in the batter's box, open stance. Outfield around toward left. They flame the pull toward left field. Here's your pitch. Curve, and it's inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. We'll watch Jackie Robinson for you in the event he does decide to take off and try to steal second. Jerry Coleman moves in a step or two, holler something to Rashi. Fourth inning, New York six, Brooklyn one. Woodling is way back deep and left. Rashi stretches. Robbie dances off first. Hendrick moves over to first. Here's the pitch, and it's outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Robinson danced off first as if he might be thinking of going down, and Henrik, who was in behind him, then came dashing over to first. Rashi had a look, but instead of throwing to Henrik, came into the plate with it. Robinson uh, winds his lead a bit, stretched by Rashi. You look at Jackie. There's the pitch, and it's in there for a strike. Jackie bluffed a dash to second that time, thought he was going to go. Two and one the count on Hodges. 
Robinson and Hodges now exchange glances. Two men down. Rashi with a stretch. A look. Here's your pitch. Swung on. Lined out in the right field corner. And Robinson might possibly score on his rounding second. Headed for third. Mate plays the rebound beautifully. He throws in to Rizzuto and holds Hodges to a single. And Robinson to third. Cliff makes beautiful play of that ball off the right field wall. Held that blow to a single as Hodges lined it into the right field corner. And Mapes, who was over in the right center, dashed over and played the rebound perfectly to keep Jackie Robinson from scoring and keep uh, Hodges from taking the extra bases. So Hodges lined a single into the right field corner, sending Robinson to third. And the batter is Mar Brackley, who struck out in the third inning. And immediately, Carl Erskine starts to warm up in the Dodger bullpen. With Bert Schotten evidently having in mind the injection of a pinch hitter for Banta, should Rackley, who now is at bat, and Campanella, who follows, get on. Score, Yankees six, Brooklyn one, the last half of the fourth. Robinson on third, Hodges on first. Two men down, Rackley left-hand hitter up. Stretch the pitch. Outside, ball one. There's nobody warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Vic again ready. He throws. Inside, ball two. Robinson on third. Hodges on first. Two down. The stretch by Rashi. Here's the pitch. Strike call, got the inside corner, just below the belt. 2-1 count on Marv. Bobby Brown's in close at third. Rizzuto, four strides to the left of second in halfway. Jerry Coleman deep, four strides to the right of second. Henrik just in behind Hodges at first. A 2-1 count on Rackley. Again, Rashi is set. Here's the pitch. Rackley takes low inside for ball three. Roy Campanella is on deck. And now Jim Turner comes out of the Yankee dugout on orders from Casey Stengel and motions for action in the Yankee bullpen. And it's Fred Sanford getting up. Just as Rashi takes his stretch, Rackley steps out of the batter's box. Rashi is perspiring rather freely. The upper portion of his uniform shirt, absolutely wet. Harvey ready for the 3-1 pitch. Runners on first and third. Here it is. And it is strike to call right over. Rackley started at first and was called back by Hubbard going up with the right hand. So you've got a full count on Rackley. Three and two. And with two down, Robinson will be playing it safe at third. That is, he'll make sure that the ball is hit somewhere before he starts running. Gil Hodges, who's on first on the other hand and who is forced, will be off and running with the pitch. So the stretch by Rashi. There goes Hodges. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three. How about that? No runs for Brooklyn. Two hits. No errors for the Yankees. And two men left on for the Dodgers. And just as Rashi was on the verge... He recovered in time to strike out Rackley in the clutch. And so the score at the end of four innings, the Yankees six, the Dodgers one. Your totals, the Yankees six runs, five hits, no errors, five left on. Brooklyn one run, four hits, one error, and three men left on base. This is Mel Allen with Red Barber bringing you the World Series from Ebbets Field. Gene Woodling up, takes a pitch inside for ball one as we go to the top of the fifth inning. With the Yankees leading 6-1. to one. Woodling walked and single to center. Right-hander ready for Jack Banner throws. Right over for a call strike fastball. And the count is even up at 1-1. One one. The fans exercising their prerogative are hollering uh, at the umpire. In comes the pitch. And it's high and outside for ball two. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. The men in blue do a great job. Without them, baseball wouldn't be what it is. 
The 2-1 delivery on its way. Swung on. There's a long drive to right field. There's Hermansky racing back. The ball's off the scoreboard. Gene plays it off. Now Snyder comes over to get it. He rolls away from Gene, and there's Woodling sliding into second with a double. Gene Woodling lines a double off the scoreboard in right center field. The rebound got away from Hermansky. It didn't uh, rebound directly at him, but at an angle. And Duke Snyder, figuring that possibility, came racing over from center field to grab the ball, but his throw into second was not in time. And Woodling is on with a double off the right field scoreboard. Here's Cliff Mates, left-hand hitter. Banda's pitch, curve inside, ball one. Mapes struck out and walked. Woodling's only other hit in this series was a double. And it was here at Abbott's Field and almost in the same spot. Band of the pitches. Mapes takes inside around the knees for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Now the pitch. Way out. It's funny that for a strike and missed by Mapes. That pitch was way outside. But Mapes had his mind made up he was going to bunt and did. That ball was two feet outside. So it's a 2-1 count. When I said a moment ago that Woodling's only other hit in the series was a double, I meant prior to today. Today he's had a walk, a single, and a double. Woodling moves off second, 6-1 New York, fifth inning to pitch. Is bunted out toward the mound. There is Banna up with it, throws over to Hodges for the out. Moving to third on the play was Woodling. It's a sacrifice for Mace. As Casey Stengel with a 6-1 to lead. Figures every other run he can get now means just that much uh, tougher role the Dodgers will have to hold to stay alive in this World Series. Mapes is out as he bunts down the first baseline. Banta to Hodges. Here's Jerry Coleman. Jorgensen moves over from third now to talk to Banta. The attendance today, 33,711. Gate receipts, one hundred and sixty-seven thousand, one hundred and sixty-five dollars and forty-five cents. The players, of course, get their shares out of the first four games, and it has been estimated that the winning team share will be just a little over five thousand, and the losing team share just a little over four thousand per player. Infield in, in comes the pitch. Jerry Coleman swings and sends a ground ball to Hodges. Gets off his glove. Here comes Whittling digging the plate. The throw is in and not in time. Woodling scored as Hodges had uh, grabbed the ball, stepped on first to retire Coleman, and almost had the chance for an unusual double play at the plate. But he threw in a hurry off balance and off to the right of the plate into the dirt. It had to be blocked by Campanella, and he was at least five to ten feet away from the plate up the first baseline and had no chance to get Woodling. It was an unusual play with so much happening at once that you couldn't get it in, all in at one time. Woodling had come up the line from third, but when the ball was hit sharply to Hodges with the infield in, Woodling decided not to go, but when the ball skipped off the glove of Hodges, he came on in. Now, Rashi takes fastball in for a strike. The ball skipped off the glove of Hodges, rolled across the foul line. He grabbed it, stepped on first in time to get Coleman, then threw to the plate trying to get Woodling, who then decided he ought to run. Now the pitch, swung on and missed, strike two by Rashi. So Coleman is out, Hodges unassisted. Is credited with a run bat in his third of the ball game. The Yankees lead seven to one. Rashi, who walked and singled, on the next pitch takes over the outside corner for call strike three. One run for the Yankees, one hit, no errors for the Dodgers. Nobody left on for New York, and the score at uh, the end of four and one half innings of play, New York seven, Brooklyn one. And as we get ready to go into the last half of the fifth inning, all set to move into the Gillette microphone, is Red Barber. And it's always great to be able to work with a great announcer. Red, I mean that from my heart. It's always a wonderful pleasure to be able to associate with you on these World Series broadcasts or any other. Thank you, Mel. And up the two-way street. Now, Big Rashi trying to nail down the World Series New York. Makes his first pitch to Campanella a good one for a call strike as we move along with the last half of the fifth inning. Big crowd uh, sitting and sort of stirring restlessly. 
The Yankees are on top of a big score now. Seven to one. Third ball is over for a call strike. Nothing in two. That was a nice one that he spun off. Rashi on the mound. This is his second appearance. As Mel pointed out to you, he started the second game. He's coming back with two days rest. He won 21 ball games, was a strong man on the mound staff of the Yankees, and Casey Stingle, out of nothing else than sentiment, uh, would give his biggest winner, who fits the pennant winning game Sunday, uh, an opportunity to go today. Throw, curve low outside, ball one. Uh, what we mean by sentiment was that if Stingle had started somebody else and the Yankees had won today, then Rashi would not get a chance to get even uh, with the boards. He was the losing pitcher in game two. So that's why he drew the assignment today, among other reasons, of course. It may very well be that Stingle felt he was his best possible pitcher anyhow. Curve outside, and it's ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Little Barra, who's had to catch through the series with a bruised left thumb. Every one of these pitches hurts him. That's a jaw there. That ball settles in that catching mitt. Barra down to give the sign. Big Cal Hubbard. Working balls and strikes, standing directly behind the receiver. Here's the right-handers 2-2 pitch. Pass ball swung on and fouled straight back on the screen and out of play. Campanella is up for his second at bat. Rashi was just moving along with the efficiency of a well-oiled machine and knocking off the first seven batters to Campanella doubled in the third inning. And two down, Reese singing him over. Brooklyn's run. I feel very much around toward left. There's a slight breeze that is blowing out toward left, but it is not a too strong game factor. Campanella hits a high foul. Back out of play again. Still two and two. As Mel gave you the figures a few moments ago, is brought in by the Book and Road Secretary, Al Park, 33,711. Here to see this fifth game of the series, third game of the set at Ebbets Field. Now, let's see. The Sunday game carries on. Rashi pitches again, two and two. Campanella hits a hot line drive right at Rizzuto, and the fine little short step holds it as he drifts into the hole between third and short. So, one up, one away. Last half for the fifth. The Yankee defense has been extremely sound. Outside of a boot which uh, meant nothing, the way Reynolds was pitching uh, uh, the opening game by Coleman, there have been no other mistakes. Now a pinch hitter, Tommy Brown, a right-hand batter, is coming up to hit the batter. Savannah, who has relieved for the last two and the third innings, is out of there. And Brown, making his second appearance as a pinch hitter, he's 0 for 1. Slender, right-hand hitter, takes a fastball through there for a call strike. Rashi, who is primarily a control pitcher, is making his pitches good as early as he can on these hitters. He's pitching with a six-run lead. Works. Curveball too high. And it is one and one. One ball, one strike. Brown hitting for batter in the last of the fifth. Rashi not wasting much time. Carl Erskine is the only pitcher working in the Brooklyn bullpen, throwing to Sam Naron, so we presume it will be he who will come on to pitch against the top of the Yankee batting order in the sixth inning. New York 7, Brooklyn 1, fastball swung on, fouled off, and the count now goes 1 and 2. The ball spun back and into the permanent press box, which is suspended from the roof of these double deck stands here at Ebbets Field. So, um, one of the members of the Fourth Estate as a World Series souvenir. One ball, two strikes. Out here around toward left. Infield is straight away. That's Hendricks, Coleman, Rizzuto, and Brown. Rashi works one and two. Fast ball swung on and missed the strike three. So Brown is set down, and that's the fifth strikeout for Rashi. Farrell fires the ball down to third. Brown trucks over toward the mound, tosses it on the hand now to the pitcher. Let's see, the outfield moves a step more toward left. That's Woodling in left field, who's had a perfect afternoon with a walk, single, and double. DiMaggio, and I know that uh, the sentimental heart of the American public was glad to see him belt one, is in center, and the right field is Mapes. Pee Wee Reese up, fastball over for a call strike. Pee Wee leads the Dodgers with the most hits he has five. One for two today. Five for 16 for the series. Swings, there's another one, a line drive over third down in left field. So Reese is on at first. And uh, this uh, 
fine money player for the Dodgers ever since he came up in 1940. Continues to show why people consider him one of the fine shortstops anywhere around. Fine single into left. And hit number five for Brooklyn. Jorgensen, the smallish southpaw swinging third baseman. Jorgensen is 0 for 2 today and is 2 for 11 in the series. Rashi pitches, fastball swung on trickle up toward first. Henry comes on, picks up the ball, and steps on the bag for the third out. So that ends matters, the last of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit. Well, we'll check our five inning totals. For the Yankees, seven runs. They're all officially scored and earned. A half a dozen hits into New York and errorless defense. Far for the Dodgers, one run off Rashi, which is earned. Five hits, which have been pretty well scattered. And for the Dodgers, one error, which was Barney's uh, throwing error in the first inning. Uh, Barney was wild at the bell, and uh, that wildness so far uh, has been the turning point of the ball game. He walked the first two hitters, and then in throwing high to second base on a pickoff play, moved them over an extra notch. Well, that's the Brooklyn Dodgers symphony uh, over saluting now the commissioner and uh, Governor Dewey and uh, playing uh, he's a jolly good fellow. Speaking about uh, the runs being officially uh, scored as earned a moment ago, we'd like to comment that the work of the three official scorers as appointed by Commissioner Chandler has been very sound and very sure. Uh, the official scorers are Oscar McGowan of the New York Times, Milton Gross of the New York Post, and Lou Niss of the Brooklyn Eagle. Erskine has been officially announced and is out on the mound. Warming up his right arm, territory to taking over. E-R-S-K-I-N-E. Carl Erskine. He'll be pitching to Rizzuto, who's had a perfectly grand series to cap a splendid year all season long in the American League. Little shortstop uh, has only been up officially once so far this afternoon. That was a fly ball to set a field. He walked to begin the ball game, which was as pivotal a play as uh, you can get. Then he uh, got the sacrifice in the second inning when he was bunting, presumably for a base hit, but still moved the man over. So therefore, he was officially scored as uh, a sacrificer. He has three hits for 16 official at-bats. He's a tough target. He has good eyes. Very quick uh, with his wrists. And he is small, just a little bit over five feet. In fact, when you see him in street clothes walking around with these athletes, you figure, well, gee, that must be the bat boy. Little Rizzuto out. You can play this game with just as big fellows as they come. Erskine makes his first pitch of fastball in under the hands for ball one. We said that Erskine was a smallish right-hander. Well, of course, he's a pretty good-sized fellow compared to Rizzuto, but these smallish pitches usually go. Delivers, fastball inside, and Rizzuto, uh, who had stood up to it, apparently had his mind set for a curve or something, had uh, suddenly uh, backtracked there at the last split second. 2 and all. Hatfield shaded toward left. Third baseman Jorgson is off the back, suspicious of a bunt. Hodges is a couple of steps up at first. Robinson up at second. Fastball in, under the hands for ball three. So Rizzuto is in the catbird seat now, as far as the count is concerned. 3 and all. The Yankees out in front, seven to one. Barney, who started in two and two-thirds innings, walked six men. Didn't take many hits to capitalize in a bushel basket full of runs. Throw, missing for ball four. So Erskine gives up a walk. This is the seventh Yankee to get a free ticket. Rizzuto for the second time is walked, and he's at first, and here is Tommy Henrik. Infield up halfway. Henry runs up his over at Bunton takes, and it's a call strike. Up goes that big right hand, uh, even bigger, Cal Hubbard. Hubbard back of the plate. Ridden at first base. At second, Passarella. Jorda at third. In the foul corners, Barr in left and Hurley in right. Erskine in position. Checks first. That goes Rizzuto. There's a curveball chopped into right field. A hit and run play. Rizzuto wheels right around second. Comes on into third. Rackley wheels. Throws into second base. A shortstop race. And it's a hit and run single into left field for Henry. So Erskine has no sooner come on than he's drawn a couple of totters, a base on balls and a single. And Yogi Barra, who is 0 for 3 today, in a crouch, swings and drives the ball foul into the right field corner. He really swings that wood. 
When he first came up to the Yankees, they didn't know where in the world they were going to play him, whether they were going to catch him, play him in the outfield, or just what. But they knew they were going to play him, or as Bucky Harris uh, said a couple of years ago, anybody who can swing that bat's going to be out there playing. Swing it the way he swings it, and he swings it. Infield is up, hoping for a play at the plate. The Yankees leading 7-1 to one and pressing forward here in the sixth inning. Nobody out, men at first and third. There's a fly ball into left field. Rackley is going back underneath it. Rizzuto tags it third. There's the catch in deep left. The throw goes to second, conceding the run and holding Henry to run at first to first base. So for New York now, 8-1. to one. And Barra bats in a run with a long fly ball to left field. The Yankees have now scored in five of the six innings in which they have come up to the plate. And Big DiMaggio gets a big hand. Joe finally hit one. I know he must feel immeasurably better. He hit that home run in the left field corner in the fourth inning. His second series hit and his first uh, real solid hit. The other was a squibber up toward third. I feel toward left. Joe swings as a high pop fly in the short right. Second baseman Robinson is out. Under it. Under it. And takes it. Henrik holding on at first. Two men are gone. And Tommy Brown, who continues to play great ball in the World Series. Let him get in the series. And uh, he almost takes over the show. Henrik at first, ready to set sail. Dickey coaching at first base. Frankie Crosetti at third. Infield is now all in shadow. So is left field. Center field and right field still have sun. Erskine delivers. Turf swung on, drilled in the right field. It is fair by about a yard in the corner. And here is Henrik wheeling in the third. The ball gets away from Hermansky. Henrik is being waved on in by Cruzetti. The throw is being relayed by Robinson. Henrik comes on to score. And two-third goes Brown. The ball gets away from Campanella. And here is Brown coming on in to score, standing up at the plate. So that will probably be scored as a triple and an error. The high bouncing throw from right field to Hermansky got off the leaping form of the catcher, Campanella, and went back to the stands. It could be scored as a double, as the throw in, and as an error, or a triple and an error. However, it's a run batted in by Brown down into the right field corner. Gives him another one. The Yankees get two more runs over to go out in front 10 to 1. And Clyde Sukforth begins that slow death march out to the mound. He is the fellow that takes the news after the pitchers to manage the shot. That is scored as a three-bagger, and the error is being charged against second baseman Robinson on his relay. Told you the Robinson relayed the throw, and I think a moment later I hastily said that the right fielder's uh, throw bounced high over the catcher. It was Robinson's relay, and Robinson is charged with the error. That is a triple for Brown. That's all for Erskine. He's out of there, and here's Hatton coming on for the second straight day. A triple for Brown. That's the second time he's tripled. Well, I guess Hatton knows how Erskine feels because Brown tripled off Hatton yesterday. Brown, a three-bagger in the right field corner, and never stops running on the concomitant uh, error, which is charged against the second baseman. Brown scores. The announcement has now been made, and Hatton is officially the pitcher, and Erskine uh, vacates the mound for him. Tommy Henrik is uh, scored officially as coming all the way in, of course, on the three bagger. Now leaving the Brooklyn dugout, going down to the bullpen is Earth Felica. Hatton takes over on the mound. It is ten to one in favor of the rampaging Yankees, and uh, Casey Stengel himself seems to be visibly relaxed down there in the Yankee dugout. I don't think he's uh, particularly concerned now uh, about events. Uh, he's got a lot of pitches, especially one guy named Joe Plays down the bullpen. Of course, he's got one that's going very well on the mound. And uh, the percentages are stacking up uh, higher and higher with the American League champions. They're leading now by uh, an aggregate score of 10 to 1. Now Hatton's about ready to go, and the battle that he'll pitch to is the left-hand hitting left fielder, Gene Woodling, who's had a perfect afternoon. And with this uh, huge margin, Stengel is not uh, making the reverse by pinch hitting with a right-hand batter. Hatton throws, fastball in there for a call strike. Nobody on. The first nine runs for the Yankees are to be scored as earned. Whether the tenth one is to be scored as earned or not remains to be seen. The error was not of the outmaking variety. Pitch. Curve ball low. One and one. Woodling, who walked in the first inning, 
singled in the center in the third and doubled in the fifth. Scored two runs. Three hits for eight official at bats. Fast ball is in under the hands and it is two and one. Two balls, one strike. The Yankees, of course, uh, leading in games, three to one, and leading in runs in this one with the Dodgers' dormy, ten runs to one. Two one pitch, swung on. There's a drive into left center field. She's in there for a base hit and pass, frankly, at least for a double. Here's Woodling coming into second, standing up to continue his bid for a perfect afternoon, and this makes all ten of the Yankee runs earned. So a solid line drive double for Woodling, which gives him three for three. His third hit. His hit charged to Hatton, of course. The Yankee runs, the first five charged to Starter Barney, the next two to Batter, the next three to Erskine. Hatton, of course, is completely responsible for whittling at second base. Cliff Mapes, who is 0 for 1 officially, 1 for 8 in the series, left hand batter, 1 for 8 in the series, left hand batter, takes a high inside curve for ball one. His base hit yesterday was a very big one for New York. With a ball game standing even, he sliced a double in the left field corner, knocked in the first two runs, and the Yankees were never headed. Swung on a high fly ball into short left. Rackley comes in, the left field is under it, backs up, makes the catch. So that closes matters in the top of the sixth inning, and the Yankees pick up three more runs, three more hits. There's one book for Mara. And at the end of five and a half innings, the score stands now, New York 10 and Brooklyn 1. Lou Boudreau of the Cleveland Indians says that he'd rather go without his morning coffee than passive shaving. Yes, Lou uses Gillette's Super Speed Razor. And here he is to tell you why. For fans, that's because it makes shaving something to look forward to. In what way, Lou? Well, red shaving is no longer a chore. It picks me up. It gives me a feeling of well-being. In fact, it's as important as breakfast to me. Well, you don't mean that you'd rather shave than eat, do you? Oh, no, but I just don't feel right until I do shave. Fans, with the Gillette Super Speed Razor, shaving is a refreshing experience and far more convenient than ever. Ask for Gillette's special World Series set. Get this fine one-piece razor and a ten-blade Gillette dispenser in a handsome styrene travel case. A big dollar seventy-five value for only a dollar. Last half of the sixth inning, the Yankees 10, the Dodgers 1. Well, to be perfectly factual about it, if Brooklyn can pull this one out today, this is going to be an explosion that will uh, be topped pretty much uh, only by several of uh, atomic uh, origin. However, this is an unpredictable ball club, a dead game ball club, and it's a ballpark that is uh, fated for the uh, unexpected. That's almost taken for granted around uh, the Diggins and Pat Bush, so let's hold on and see. Duke Snyder, first up last in the sixth, right hander Rashi pitches, and Snyder swings, does the ball out deep in the left center field, and it's in there for a base hit, comes off the wall. Snyder's coming into second base. Woodling throws in, and it's a double for Snyder. The ball gets through from Coleman, but Rashi backs up the play, and Snyder's content to stay at second, lashing out with a double. So the Duke has been swinging away. And a double up the alleyway and left center field. This gives him his second World Series hit. This is hit number six this afternoon off Rashi. The Dodgers, trailing by nine runs, have uh, only two alternatives, as they say in baseball. You swing or you take. In other words, you swing to hit and you take to try and get a base on ball. Ten to one, New York. Rashi is... The uh, uniform shirt now becoming sweat stained as he's been toiling steadily along. Big right hander. Robinson, who is one for two today, backs out as Rashi gets all set. Time is called. Robinson has three hits for 14 at bats. At field toward left. Jack runs up as over Bunton takes a pitch inside for ball one. Snyder's second, and of course, we'll try and run the bases conservatively. Uh, manager Stengel steps to the front of the dugout and says, look out for the bunt again. The pitch. Fastball that is outside just by a tick for ball two. Rashi trying to keep control of the situation with a nine-run lead. Delivers in there for a call strike. 
He hasn't been fooling with his curve so much. He's been primarily a fastball pitcher this afternoon. Two balls, one strike. Robinson swinging, falls the back. Two and two. Snyder not only came up with a uh, base hit for himself in the sixth inning, which will help his feelings immeasurably, but by getting a base hit, he uh, saw to it that he didn't strike out. He's only one strike out away from uh, tying the record for a batter striking out the most in a five-game series. Rogers Hornsby struck out eight times in 1929. Robinson takes the curve outside, four ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Snyder has struck out seven times in the series. Three and two. That's the ball and strike count. One out, last of the sixth. Rashi pitching with a little bit more deliberation now. He's probably uh, beginning to get tired. He's come back after two days rest. Big right hand to throw. Outside for ball four. And Robinson uh, achieves his objective, getting on base with a based on balls, which is the first given up by Rashi. And pitching coach Jim Turner steps to the front of the Yankee dugout and motions to the Yankee bullpen with his left hand. What do you think that means? Only one thing, Joe Page. And there's Big Page starting to warm up, and he knows how to warm up. He doesn't leave any of his pitches down in the bullpen. Well, the Yankees want to end it. There it is, Page throwing in the bullpen. The Yankees leading 10-1. to The batter is Gene Hamansky at the plate. Swings and fouls the ball out of play back on the screen. Nothing in one. Big Rashi takes the sign from Stocky Barra. Pitches. There's a bounding ball hit through between first and second in the right field. Snyder being waved by Stock around third. He comes on in to score, and when the ball is bobbled in right field by Mates Robinson, who had stopped at second, picks up close to third. Hamansky holds it first. That makes it a 10 to 2 ball game, and an error is charged on Mapes in right field. You can't bobble that ball for so much as a split second on Robinson. His reflexes are amazingly rapid. So Hamansky singles in to right. Dodge, if nothing else, they're going to worry the Yankees and Stengel as much as they can. They got Stengel up in front of the dugout hollering now. Robinson stopped at second, moves over to third on right field and makes his miscue. Snyder scores, of course. Up now is Gil Hodges. He singled his last trip. He's one for two today. He has three hits for 14. Out to around toward left. Ten to two ball game. Favor New York. Nobody out. Slow curve is over for a call strike. And Page is warming up in the Yankee bullpen. You watch him warm up. You would uh, think he was being very lackadaisical. Very unconcerned. That uh, is a part of his ability to do so much work. He just gets sort of loose down there. And he gets right on the edge of where he's ready to throw hard, and then he takes the mound. Robinson off third. Mansky off first. The Yankee infield is up only one or two steps in double play depth. The outfield toward left. Rashi pitches a curve, swung on and missed. Strike two. He spun a big, slow, breaking curve over. Broke it off very nicely. Nothing in two. For the Yankees, ten. For the Dodgers, two. There's a lot left to happen in this ball game. Gillette folks, mighty happy to send it to you wherever you are, wherever you happen to be. Hodges leaning in slightly, Rashi pitches, curve low outside. The ball goes down nicely to his right to hold the ball up. One ball, two strikes. One and two. Before the ball game, we had a talk with Billy Southworth, and we're very happy to tell you that he feels fine. He looks fine. He's all set to resume the managership of the uh, Boston Braves next year. He was pretty sick. He's gone as far as he could go. The one and two pitch. Curve swung on a miss, strike three, and Hodges is stuck out on big breaking stuff. This is the sixth strikeout for Rashi. 
Rashi struck out in eight innings, four men in game two. Rashi apparently found that his hands were perspiring a great deal, and Stengel held up uh, Powell around the dugout, but uh, Rashi said, well, I don't want it. So he's gone back to the mound. Henry could come over from first base to visit with him, goes back to first. Mansky first base, Robinson at third. Those are the two runners. One man out. The batter is Marvin Rackley. He was 0 for 2. Both times he's been up, he struck out. He's 0 for 4 in the series. Works well upon the handle of the bat. Small left hand hitter. Swings on a curve, hits it down to first base. Henry got and drops the runners. Let's see. Brush Robinson back. Steps on first for the out. On Rackley, holds Robinson at third base. And Mansky moves on to second. Jack, of course, uh, in other words, had the one run meant anything, I think he'd have tried. But, of course, when you're eight runs behind, you, you don't risk an out. So, Henrik just waved his uh, his arm menacingly once, and Robinson obligingly darted back into third base. Hemansky moved over to second. So, Rackley is just out routine to the first baseman. Unassisted. That's the second out. Roy Campanella, who has had a fine series to cap a very solid season. Campanella, who is one for two, Four hits for 14 at bats. Right hand batter. First base is open, but the two out there pitching to him. That eight run advantage uh, lets you do it the way you want to do it. The Yankees leading 10 to 2. Last to the sixth. Rashi takes a long time getting the sign. Pumps wants pitches a curveball in there. Ball strike. Rashi settle down, get the last two outs. So Page is promptly uh, sloughed off. Throw. Curveball, low outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Rashi, uh, apparently feeling that uh, being tired, that he's losing something on his fastball, is going to his curve more and more. Casey Stengel. Moving around. Hollis step at the Rashi and Vic nods, uh-huh. The pitch is the fastball in there for a call second strike. One and two, one ball, two strikes. Robinson at third. With a long rundown just then. Manski at second. I feel very much around toward left. Campanella, stocky, strong, open stance. Takes an outside curve. It's down into the dirt. Gets away from Bella, who picks up the ball. Throws down to third base. Robinson just to slide back. It was a bang, bang play. That ball hit into the dirt and spun out of Barrow's mitt and looked as though it might be getting ready to be a wild pitch. But Barrow promptly recovered it on the first bounce. And Robinson, who immediately uh, started toward home plate when he saw the ball hit the ground, was hard-pressed to get back as Barrow recovered. He lost his mitt in the process, but he didn't bother to pick it up. He just picked up the ball and fired it down the third. Two balls, two strikes. Page resumes uh, throwing once in a while leisurely in the Yankee bullpen. The 2 2 pitch is a curve over but too high. So it is 3 and 2. Three balls, two strikes. Last of the sixth inning. Ball game is now two hours old. Rashi pumps. Delivers 3 2, a curve outside for ball four, and Campanella walks. It's low for bases. And Billy Cox is coming up as a pinch hitter. Billy Cox, who pinch hit a dribble single, uh, sort of right in front of the plate yesterday. Cox taking over for Joe Hatton. Attention, please. Paul Brooklyn, number three, Billy Cox, batting for Joe Hatton. So Cox coming up to hit. The bases are FOB. They are full of Brooklyn's, as the saying goes around this neck of the woods. Three men on. Two out. The Yankees, ten. The Dodgers, two. Felica, the only pitcher throwing in the Brooklyn bullpen, so we'll see him in the seventh inning. Rashi now trying to settle matters in the six pitches. Misses with the fastball in under the hand. Four ball one. One ball, no strike. Big right hand has a very easy move. 
He's centering his attention on the hitter. Pinch hitter Billy Cox, slight right-hand batter. Swings and misses at a sharp curveball. One and one. One ball, one strike. Cox had the regular job at third until he sprained an ankle in the morning game Labor Day. And uh, didn't play at all until yesterday. And he got in the ball game, finished it. 21 pitch, swung on, there's a foul ball. Back out of play. One and two. Barrett takes a new ball. Asks for time, walks out to the mound. One and two. Ball and strike count. Rashi, who lost uh, that brilliant ball game to Preacher Row, game two at the stadium. Now trying to hang on. Page and Silvera have stopped their work down the Yankee bullpen. They're looking on, along with everybody else. The pitch is a curve high side for ball two. Two and two. Cox swings from the end. Rashi in no hurry. Well, he figured he's got a long winter ahead of him. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on the wrist. Pass for high side. Strike three. So Cox is stuck out. He couldn't lay off that high inside fastball. This is uh, one of the pitcher's best friends. It's seven strikeouts for Rashi. So it is one run in the last half of the sixth inning. Two hits of the three men left. So the totals at the end of six innings. For the Yankees, ten runs are all earned. Ten hits and one error. For the Dodgers, two runs earned, seven hits, and two errors. Attention, please. Well, Dodgers had an agreement that they total cold water. Lakers being announced as the pitcher to come on in the seventh inning. And the Yankees at the end of six are out in front, ten to two. And on our broadcast, with the best wishes of the Gillette Safe to Razor folks, we'll pause ten seconds for our station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hear the World Series exclusively over WOR and see it on WOR-TV Channel 9. WOR and WOR-FM, New York. Uh, I want to check back on the Yankee totals. Uh, we just gave you uh, ten hits for them. The hits should be nine. Three hits off Bonnie, three hits off Batter, two off Erskine, and one off Hatton. So, the Yankees 10-9-1. The Dodgers, 2-7-2. Two, two. Now Palika is out there on the troubled scene, ready to pitch to second baseman Coleman as we move into the seventh inning. Palika, a young right-hander, used primarily as a relief pitcher all year for the Dodgers. Not used very much in the late stages. Coleman, who's had a tremendous series for a rookie, one for three today, right-hand batter, swings and slaps it from foul in the upper first base stand, strike one. As we move along into the seventh inning, with the Yankees leading 10 to 2. The shadow of the stands has now almost completely developed the playing area. Right center field, in its depth out by the wall, still has a little bit of sun. Fastball swung on and missed at the plate. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Plika, six foot, graceful working right hander, misses with the fastball low inside. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Plika uh, kicked on that decision. The one and two pitch, swung on, hit down straight to second baseman Robinson, who's up with it on a big hop, throws over to first to Hodges, and Coleman is retired. One up and one away. And pitcher Rashi gets a growing round of applause as he comes closer and closer to home plate. He's been quite a pitcher so far in the series. When you lose one to nothing, that's just as close as you can cut it and be a losing pitcher. That was his fate against Preacher Raw in the second game. Bleaker's fastball high inside to Rashi, who's a right-hand batter, and who has one hit. Not going to run with it back in the third inning. Vick steps up, swings, misses. One and one, pitches right down in the slot. One out, nobody on in the seventh. Throw. Fastball low inside, two and one. Campanella pumps the sign. 
Outfield, step toward left. Rush is a good hitting pitcher. Takes a fastball over for a false second strike. It's two and two. It's a very uh, interesting and a somber study to watch some of the faces of the National Leaguers as they sit back of the Brooklyn bench. Over there in the uh, New York uh, giant box, Carl Hubble. Eddie Brannick, the road secretary. Mel Ott sitting shoulder to shoulder with uh, Leo DeRocha. 2-2 pitch, swung on, hit right back to the mound on a big bounder. Felica throws over to first, and Rashi is out. But Felica made him run all the way down the line. He wouldn't throw over there until after he had run very close to first base. So, two men will go on top of the seventh. And the scooter, Phil Rizzuto, who's had a great series. He's done everything that you could ask of him. Pitch, fastball in there. I think in one. Felica so far just uh, trying to get the ball over, I think. He hasn't gone very much. Uh, he can throw most anything. Deals. There is a breaking ball that's fouled off. It might have been a knuckler. Or seemed to be giving the snake-like uh, waivers that came up. Nothing in two. Outfield toward left. Infield is up because of this fellow's speed. Curves on and missed. Strike three. So Polika strikes him out. That's the first curve ball to use. Nothing across then for the Yankees. This is the first time in the ball game that they did not get a man on base in some fashion in the seven innings in which they batted. And the score remains the end of six and a half innings. The Yankees ten and the Dodgers two. Last half of the seventh inning, and it's the top of the order. Reese, Jorgensen, and Snyder. And uh, despite the adverse fortunes to his ball club, Pee Wee Reese has continued to be a standout. He's had singles his last two trips, drove in Brooklyn's first run, which guaranteed that, uh, if nothing else, the complete ignominy of a shutout would be averted. Pee Wee has had six hits so far. Rashi works, and there's a line drive hit out into left field, right out to Woodling. Straight to the left fielder who holds it for... One gone, last of the seven. And Johnny Jorgensen, who's off for three, moves up to the plate. Duke Snyder moves out on deck. The spatter, as they call him, a ten hitter with an open stance, about 150 pounds. Big Rashi pumps once, delivers, fastball on the outside, ball one. He just pitching to spots. Most of his shirt now. Staying with perspiration. He deals. Outside again for ball two. Two and all. The Dodgers in a spot like this have no alternative left but to take the count right on down. Trying to get ball four because, as you know, there's no defense against ball four. And you've got to get a lot of men on when you're behind eight runs. Rashi misses with a fastball at the knees. Low inside for ball three. Three and all. One away. Nobody on. Barra sets his mid as the target. Three nothing pitch. Inside for ball four. The Jorgensen throws his stick away. Sam Strahl, the Brooklyn bat boy, retrieves it. This is walk number three for Rashi. And Duke Snyder, who doubled. Last time up in the sixth inning. Later was turned into Brooklyn's second tally. Snyder one for three today. He has two hits for 19 at-bats. Pitch, curve, swung on, hit down to second baseman. Come on, gets through him. Out in right center field. Jorgensen around second, goes into third, and Snyder holds it first. Coleman going to his right over towards second base. That's a tough play at the mid-hand side for the second baseman. Can't quite come up with the ball, although he partially flags it, and it's officially scored as a base hit. So Snyder comes up to the wall. Uh, that has to be a base hit. That could have only been a great play had Coleman come up with it. So that is a single in the center field for Snyder, sending Jorgensen to third. Hit number eight for the Dodgers, and the batter is Robinson. Who has one hit for two today? One in at first and third. Rashi's fastball is low outside, ball one, and Joe Page is up again. He's 
What is it they used to say, as sure as death and taxes? Well, you might say, as far as the Yanks are concerned, as sure as death, taxes, and pays. Robinson takes a call strike, fastball over. One ball, one strike. Runners at first and third. One out, last to the seventh. Out the around toward left. Throw, swung on, hit foul outside first base. That's one and two. One ball, two strikes. I guess at a time like this that uh, Casey Stengel remains a little itchy because uh, he's seen big leads evaporate. Everybody, of course, knows uh, that at one time in the World Series, the Athletics uh, came up with ten runs in one inning. That's what makes uh, baseball uh, the interesting, charming, irresistible sport that it is, is its consistent uncertainty, complete uh, unpredictability. So, you play them out to the end and see what happens. That's what we're doing. The one and two pitch. Swung on. There's a high fly ball into left field. Woodling's on Rich. An easy chance for him. Jorgensen tags at third. There's the catch. Jorgensen comes on in and scores. And Henrik, the first baseman. No, it's Brown. Cut the ball off in front of Henrik. And this holds Snyder at first base. So it's a 10 to 3 ball game. Fly ball to left field. High. Deep enough, but uh, not too well tagged. And Jorgensen scores. Ten to three. Stengel, of course, going just as far as he can with Rashi. He wants him to finish. Gene Hermansky, who singled in the run in the sixth inning for the Dodgers, their second tally, comes up. The Yankees are now moving all so close. So close to the big stake. The punted races were better, right down to the last day. Now the Yankees trying to decide the series. Kamansky takes a curve that hangs outside to him. Right-hand pitcher working to a left-hand batter. Gene has to have the ball examined, so Fred on par Cal Hubbard orders it brought to him for an inspection. And he takes it out. Apparently it had uh, some dirt spot on it. If there is anything that has changed the play of baseball, it has been the baseball itself. And not only uh, the construction of the baseball, but the fact that a new ball is constantly being used. In the old days, uh, just play with the ball all afternoon. Maskey takes a pitch high, ball two. Uh, back before 1920, for example, the pitch could do anything with the ball he wanted to. And some of them did some fearful things. Today, a pitcher has to make every pitch good. Two nothing pitch. Low outside, ball three. Three balls, no strikes, and there's Stengel just mucking around. It's a 10 to 3 Yankee lead, but Mr. Stengel is not comfortable. He's been in this game a long time and in this ballpark and booked him a long time. Rashi seems to be, uh, be quite tired. He's forcing himself. Paul Minna gets up to start throwing in the book and bullpen. Pitch. Low for ball four, and Hamansky draws the base on ball. And two out, he takes first to Snyder, moves over to second base. Walk number four off Rashi, and all four walks have come in the last two innings, sixth and seventh. Well, there is uh, Stengel standing in front of the Yankee bench. Boy, what a year he's had, huh? What a year. Never got very far. Managing in the major leagues at Brooklyn, at Boston. He never had very good ball players. He was given some ball players this year, and he's really come through. Now the matter is Hodges, 10-3, favor New York. Rashi misses just outside by no more than the width of a Gillette blue blade, but it's wide enough. Ball one. Hodges has one for three. Out field run toward left. A tender minute. Very tall, going down in the right field corner for Brooklyn. Page is already warmed up. He's just watching for the Yankees. There's a fastball over, one and one. One ball, one strike. Rashi is weary. But he wants to go. 
You have a feeling, however, the uh, next thing that happens to him, he's out. 21 pitch, swung on as a high fly ball, deep in the left field, way back in the left field. It is in there for a home run, and it's a 10 to 6 ball game. Singles going to the mound, and Rash is coming out. There he goes, a big sweat stain figure with his head down, walking into the Yankee bench. Stengel is out of the mound, holding the ball, talking to Barra, and Joe Page is coming on. And uh, the Dodgers, who die hard, are still alive, and it's a 10 to 6 ball game. There's Joe Page, the master relief pitcher of his era. Page coming out to the mound. Well, Big Hodges hit a three-run home run. Stengel waiting on the mound to hand the ball to Page. Rackley is scheduled to hit first, but it will probably be a pinch hitter. Rackley's a left-hand batter, and Page is a left-hander. I see Louis Olmo going over to the Brooklyn uh, batting cage. Apparently, he's going to get a stick and hit. At least he hasn't picked up a bat as yet. Page is officially in out. Well, while we have the opportunity, Page taking over at the mound. It's a 10 to 6 game in favor of New York. Uh, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hear the World Series exclusively over WOR. See it on WOR TV, Channel 9. WOR and WOR FM, New York. So far, manager Shotton has not picked up his pinch hitter as yet. Ralph Branca gets his glove, and the big pitcher wears number 13 is going down to the bullpen along with Bruce Edwards to throw with Paul Mena. It's a 10 to 6 ball game, and uh, Louis Almo will be the pinch hitter. Well, Mel, you've been watching Rashi all year. Uh, he got pretty tired, didn't he? It was obvious he was quite tired. He's the fellow that uh, we wondered about at the very beginning of the game, the two-day rest proposition with him. Though he's a big fellow, and he is strong, yet he doesn't particularly care for the warm weather. He's always a better pitcher in cooler weather. And he gave it all he had up to that seventh inning. He was tiring in the sixth. And I think Casey Stengel's idea there was to try and get as far as he could with him so that... Uh, he would not have to work Joe Page any longer than he would have to, because Joe has worked quite a lot in the series. Bob? So, uh, the Dodgers caught up with uh, Rashi, and he's gone. And now Louis Olmo is coming up with the pinch hitter against Joe Page. The last time they met, Olmo hit him for a home run. So, Page takes over. The Dodgers, who were behind 10-1, uh, now moved up to where it's 10-6. There's a pass ball right in there for a call strike. As the big, better than six-foot left-hander, Joe Page takes over. This is the third time that Page is the lead. Page relieved Tommy Byrne, you know. Did a tremendous job in game three. Winning pitcher. Almost swings as a high foul. Back of the Brooklyn bench. Coming down in the spectators. Out of play. No balls, two strikes. Omo, right hand hitter. Stands deep, back in the box, over the close stance. So the park is buzzing again. Page delivers. There's a swing and a miss for strike three, and he comes on and strikes that all more on three straight pitches. So that closes matters for the last half of the seventh. And in the last of the seventh inning, for the Dodgers, four runs, an inning which is featured by Gil Hodges' home run with two on. Two hits. The other two men to get on were bases on balls. So at the end of seven to check totals, ten runs, nine hits, one hour for New York, six runs, nine hits, and two hours for Brooklyn. All runs in the ball game are earned. 
Omo, who hit for left field directly, has just been announced as going out into left field. Ball game, uh, two and a half hours old. Ready to move now into the eighth inning. In case you're wondering what would happen uh, should uh, a ball game, which started at uh, 2 o'clock on Sunday, here this uh, late in the year in the fall, should it be an extremely long game and run into darkness, uh, would they call it? Well, Commissioner Chandler decided that uh, if necessary, because there are lights in both parks, the lights would be turned on. The game would go ahead. However, on Sunday, uh, they could only play until 7 o'clock. They did have to turn the lights on. The most runs ever scored by both clubs in the total World Series game, 22, in case you're wondering about that. There have been 16 so far in this one. They're divided with the Yankees 10 and the Dodgers 6. Now we'll see what happens. The eighth inning, and it is Tommy Henrik, who has one hit today, single his last time up. Right end of Palika delivers, and Henrik swings and drills the ball to right center field. Snyder going over and makes a fine catch on it. What a day he's had. He's still got the ball. He's... Mark Passarella ran all the way until he saw Snyder was back on his feet before he would call out. Snyder going into right center field turned a complete uh, somersault. He just tumbled over and over after he caught the ball. And uh, umpire Passarella was going to make sure before he signaled out. That's the third fine catch for Snyder. Two of them off DiMaggio, as Mel Allen told you earlier in the ball game. Barra steps in and takes a call strike. Nothing in one. There's a pitch high outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. The Yankees ten. The Dodgers six. And the place is alive. Vibrantly so once again. Pitch is swung on. There's a high fly ball into deep right center field. Snyder back all against the concrete makes the catch. 376 feet away. And Barra is the time. Throw two men to go on. Two up, two out. Top of the eighth. And here is uh, DiMaggio. The Jolter. Jolted one in the fourth inning. His second uh, series hit and his first solid one. A home run. Right hand batter, as you know. Outfield deep round toward left. Felica pitches a fastball high inside. Ball one. The two Brooklyn uh, pitchers in the bullpen, Branker and Minner, continue working. The Maggio takes a fastball over for a call strike from the knees. For the Dodgers in the last of the eighth inning, it'll be Campanella, the catcher who hits eighth, then probably a pinch hitter in the top of the order. 21 pitch. Low outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. Ball game that was 10 to 1 is now 10 to 6, favor New York. Two out for the Yankees in the eighth. Two one pitches, a curve just missing high outside for ball three. And Felica uh, turns his back, walks to the back of the mound. He still has not uh, turned around to accept the ball from Campanella. Now he does. Three and one. Three one pitch, swung on and missed. Fastball in by the hands. Radio taking his cut. Three and two. Campanella pumps the side. Bacon response delivers. High inside for ball four and the Maggio walk. So Polik in his relief roll retired the first five and now walks to Maggio. We have bases on balls. The Yankees have received eight walks. The Dodgers have received four. Great number of runs uh, stem from the walls. Snyder has been very busy in center field. Mel just checked up. He looked back through his box score. Snyder's had uh, 18 putouts so far in the series. The record in a five-game series for center fielders, uh, 20 by Earl Combs. Tommy Brown takes a curveball. Uh, Bobby Brown takes a curveball in there for a call strike. No balls, one strike. Bobby has had a single walk strikeout and a triple. Brown gets in and sets it to Felica. 
puts his right foot on the slab. He's in pitching position. Delivers to Maggio. Breaks and Brown hits the ball out of the left field. She's in there for a base hit. It's a bounding ball that Ormo pulls down. The Maggio holds on to second base. The throw goes into second. So, two men go on. A walk to Joe. And a, another base hit for Brown. Line single into left field. That ball almost um, had enough kangaroo in it to bounce up high over the left fielder. So for the Yankees, man at first and second. And stepping in is Gene Woodling. The Yankees, uh, who had a nine-run lead, are now reduced to a four, and they'd like to have um, some of that big plus back again. All they can get. The Yankees, of course, trying to nail the series down. The Dodgers trying to remain alive. The matter is uh, quite simple, very basic. Well, swung on a high fly ball into left field. Olmos under it. And the left fielder takes it for the third out. And this is the first time that Woodling has been retired as a batter. So that's all for the bid in the top of the eighth inning. No runs, one hits, two men left. And with the Dodgers coming in for the last half of the eighth, the score remains the Yankees 10 and the Dodgers 6. Remember, men, look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever home. Roy Campanella stepping in to be the first batter last of the eighth inning, and Bruce Edwards, a stocky right-hand hitter, second-string catcher, is being brought in from the bullpen up to the bench, uh, apparently to hit for Polika. However, right, let's uh, wait developments and see. And uh, Edwards comes up to the bench and is apparently instructed to notify the bullpen who they wish to have throwing. And Branca is ordered to stop throwing and Minna is to throw. Eddie Mixer's utility infielder gets a catch as long goes down to the bullpen in place of Edwards. Page takes the sign, throws, Roy swings, a high, high pop fly. Let's see, the first baseman, Tommy Henrik, is under the ball, under it. He's got it. So one up and one gone. And Bruce Edwards walking up to uh, pinch hit. This will be his second appearance. He ended game three as he looked to the third strike that paid through fast. For Brooklyn, number 10, Bruce Edwards, for Edwards stepping in. Page trying to nail the world's championship down for the Yankees. Delivers, fastball swung on and missed. It was Page all summer long, working for a pennant. What a job he did in the next to the last game to keep the Yankees alive in order for them to win Sunday. And now he's pitching for the big stick. Delivers. Fastball outside, ball one. Oddly enough, it was Page in the seventh and deciding game between these two teams in 47 that uh, held Brooklyn off and enabled the Yankees to go ahead and win and clinch it. So he's being given a second chance to clinch it for his ball club. It's a rather appropriate honor. The games that he's saved say nothing of those that he's won himself all season long. 21 pitches swung on as a base hit into left field as the Dodgers remain going. Edwards is single into left, and he's on at first. So hit number one on page, hit number 10 for the Dodgers. That's hit number 20 in the ball game. You can add them up hurriedly correctly. And lead off to of Pee Wee Reese, who is two for four today. Has six hits for 18 so far. Those are five games. Reese up. The Yankees leading 10 to 6. Throw. Third ball in there. Good for a call strike. Reese, who is very good upon occasion at dropping a bunt for a base hit, bluffed that he would bunt. Page broke off the mound toward the plate. The third baseman, Brown, came rushing in. Mixus is being uh, recalled to the bench in the bullpen. Mena is the pitcher up throwing. Apparently it will be Mena who will come on to relieve in the ninth inning. Big tall rangy left-hander. Page checks first. Henrik is not on the bag. Reese swings and misses. 
Nothing in two. And judging from the way that Pee Wee moved his feet, he was trying to hit that ball on the right. Nothing in two. Edwards doesn't get off first very far. The percentage, of course, is for Henrik to be off the bag, and the first baseman is halfway between first base and his uh, full fielding depth. Pitch is swung on, hit right back to the mound. Page is up with it. Throws down to second base to Rizzuto. One out to throw on to first base. Double play. And that ends the eighth inning. So a bounding ball is hit back to the pitcher, and Page knew what to do with it. Fired back to shortstop Rizzuto, who then relayed it over to first baseman Tommy Henrik, and that took care of that. And for the Yankees, that gives them their fifth double play in the series. The Dodgers have had one. So at the end of eight four rounds, men are coming in from the bullpen, and the Yankees lead with Page trying to be the boy at the dike, ten to six. Folks, the popular Gillette Tech razor with five Gillette blue blades for only forty nine cents is a world famous shaving bargain, believe me. This razor has one feature after another that makes shaving smooth and comfortable. It sets up stubble as a barber does. Holds the blade rigidly, eliminates edge vibration, protects you against nicks. For real shaving satisfaction at a rock bottom price, get a Gillette Tech Razor. Paul Mena, the 17th Dodger to get into the ball game, and the sixth pitcher comes on to the mound. The record for the most players in a World Series game by one team is 21. Uh, correction, Miller is the 18th. 18th. So Miller comes on. For the Yankees, it will be Mapes, Coleman, and Page, the last third of the batting order in the top of the ninth. The Yankees got two runs off Barney, who walked the first two men that he faced early in the afternoon about two hours and 45 minutes ago. Then Rex, in a pickoff attempt at second base, uh, made a wild throw, and the runners each went up a notch. So a fly ball and a single got them in. Then the Yankees picked up three runs and got Barney out of there in the third inning. It continued at the expense of Jack Banner with single runs in the fourth and fifth, and uh, got three runs of Erskine in the sixth inning. Hatton finally got them out. Felica held them. Men are now taking over. Meanwhile, uh, the Yankees who have been front running just a moment. There is a consultation between the umpires and uh, Commissioner Chandler. And the lights are going to be turned on. The lights are going to be turned on for the first time in a World Series ball game. Commissioner Chandler, uh, who has handled the World Series so efficiently and so thoughtfully, now says that with the whole field in shadow, we will pause until all the lights can be turned on. So what the commission is doing is what baseball has been doing, is taking advantage of the benefits of science. So the lights are now being turned on, and this is an uh, historic occasion. They are about to be turned on, oddly enough, in a Sunday game which went very long uh, between the Yankees and the Dodgers in 1947. But the ball game happened to end. Had they gone another inning, the lights would have been turned on then. And uh, as we told you earlier, the commissioner had uh, said that he would turn the lights on if he felt it is necessary. So after a brief consultation with the uh, plate umpire Cal Hubbard and Beans Redden, who is the senior umpire from the National League as far as uh, years of work are concerned, the commissioner said, we'll hold up the ball game, let men throw a few more pitches and get the lights turned on. So light power after light power are being turned on. So history is being made. The lights are being turned on. As we look at the clock on the scoreboard here at Brooklyn, it indicates uh, roughly 10 minutes of 5 Eastern Standard Time. The, uh, it, uh, were there no stands, they would not have had to turn the lights on. But with the sun setting behind the main stands, the whole field is completely in deep shadow. So the lights are being turned on. And it takes a little time to get them all turned on. In other words, there's no master switch that turns on uh, all the light towers at one fell swoop. Now let's see, uh, Mel, I see you've got the record book out. Uh, is this game uh, going to be a long game by time compared to some other World Series games? No, Red, uh, it's uh, an approximation. Of course, a great deal happens. Uh, depends on what happens here in the ninth inning. But the longest game by time, 
three hours and 28 minutes, the Tigers and Cubs in 1945, but that was an extra inning game. Won 12 innings. The uh, longest game by time for a nine-inning game is three hours and 19 minutes, the Dodgers and the Yankees in that very same game you were talking about a little while ago. And we've gone two hours and 45 minutes so far, so possibly could uh, approach the record. They say that uh, everything happens at Brooklyn. Well, we've got the lights on for the first time in a World Series game. And now Menno makes his first pitch for leaving in the night to Cliff Mapes, a left-hand hitter. And it is called strike. Menno, a left-hander. Mapes, a left-hand hitter. Over two today. Takes a curve on there for call strike two. Nothing and two. So all the lights are on. And it makes quite a difference. Although the lights do not take as much effect with daylight as they do, of course, uh, in complete darkness. But that's a help. It dispels the shadows. Throw, high outside. That's a very sound uh, decision by Commissioner Chandler because it, uh, it not only adds to the efficiency and the fairness of the game, but it prevents any possible injury. One and two pitch, curve swung on. There's a high fly ball into left center field. Snyder coming over. Wait, left field almost over. And the left fielder makes the catch. So put out for left fielder Louis Olmo. One up, one away, top of the ninth. The fans in the ballpark are remaining, waiting to see if there will be something in the last half of the ninth inning. I imagine that's what you folks are doing, listening to this Gillette broadcast. The Yankees, 10, and the Dodgers, 6. Second baseman, uh, Jerry Coleman. Had a fine series, right-hand batter, stepping in. As hard as pitchers throw the ball, we're only 60 feet and 6 inches away. When it begins to get dark in a ballpark, uh, it's very hazardous uh, for hitters. Throw, high inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. One out, top of the ninth. Coleman leaning in. Pitch is swung on foul back. One and one. One away, nobody on. Jerry leaning in. Menace pitches a fastball too low. Two balls, one strike. Bill Dickey coaching at first, hollers at the Coleman, get on that bag. It's one of the perennial first base coaching war cries. Two one pitch, swung on, drilled out into right center field. There's Hanansky going back, the ball's hit over his head. And there's Holman around first base coming in a second and stands up for a double. So he belts one. That gives him now a total of two hits today and five so far for the series. He just moved right in as though he'd been playing in them all his life. This happened to be his first one. And he's hit his uh, base hits to all fields. And now Pitcher Page comes on. That's the third double for Coleman as he stands down at second base. One out, Page. The 10 batter stepping in. The Yankees, that gives them 11 hits, and they've gotten at least one hit off of all six of the Brooklyn pitches. Got three off Bonnie, three off Batter, two off Erskine, and one each off Hatton, Fleeker, and Amena. Page takes a fastball in on his hands for ball one. One ball, no strikes. One gone. I feel toward right. They play him to pull. So swings, it's right back to the mound. Minner runs Coleman back into second and throws over to first and pages out. One to three if you score, and he pitches it to the first baseman. Minner to Hodges. Two men are gone, and the batter is Phil Rizzuto. Now, Phil has not had a hit today. The Yankee hits have been hogged by Brown and Woodling, each having three. Coleman's had two. Rizzuto swinging, foul tips it. Oh, all one strike. New York 10, Brooklyn 6.
Stengel, of course, would like to pick up this run. Coleman represents his second, a little bit more ninth inning insurance. Fastball high outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. Rizzuto, tough man up there at the dish. He's hard to get past. Big tall left-hander delivers. A slow curve. Drill down in the right field. Hermansky coming on and makes the catch of the line drive. Ball was well hit, so that's all for that bid. Top of the ninth inning. So, here we are. This is it. Last half of the ninth. The Yankees, 10, and the Dodgers, 6. So we'll know something definite in the next few minutes. That's for certain. One other thing uh, definite uh, is it will pause 10 seconds for station identification. It's the neutral broadcasting system. Hear the World Series exclusively over WOR. See it on WOR-TV Channel 9. WOR and WOR-FM, New York. Last half of the ninth inning. And uh, Eddie Nixis will hit for Jorgensen to get a right-hand batter up against left-hander Joe Page, who's relieving. There's nobody throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Manager Stengel has complete confidence in Joe Page. Nobody throwing in the Brooklyn bullpen, and no reason to be until uh, several fellows uh, get on base and score. The Yankees 10 and the Dodgers 6. Now is uh, this to be the denouement or not? Brooklyn number 34, Eddie Mixes, batting for Jorgensen. Mixes, who makes the 19th player that manager Shotton has committed to the ball game. Mixes hitting for Jorgensen. Last of the ninth inning. Right hand batter. Hot field around toward left. Well, Big Page is Stengel's man. He's got nobody behind him in the bullpen right now. Joe sort of rubs his left arm across his nose. Now looks down, takes a sign from Barra. Makes us in a crouch. And Page uh, starts to pump and then uh, decides that he won't pitch, backs off. His footing isn't just right. Lights are on. Came on top of this ninth inning. Throw. Swung on. Line drive. Into left field for a base hit. It'll be for two. There's Mixus around first base. The ball kicking around in left. And there's Mixus coming in a second with a whistling double. Zuto runs out to left and brings the ball in. So Eddie Mixus opens up with a line drive double. And... Jim Turner, on orders from manager Stengel, motions down to the bullpen for a right-hander. So there's going to be somebody throwing down in back of page now. And Duke Snyder is at the plate. He's had hits his last two times up. Two for four. And Ali Reynolds, the pitching star for the Yankees, is in the bullpen throwing. There's a curve outside to Snyder. Ten to six, favor New York. Mixes has opened up for the pinch and double last half of the ninth inning. Snyder at the plate. The Yankees fidgety. Page pitches and Snyder swings and misses with a fastball in down around his knees. He went after it. One ball, one strike. Snyder to be followed by Robinson, Hamansky, Hodges, that section of the batting order. Ford Frick, National League president, looking on intently. Sitting over there with Mrs. Frick, back of the book and dog out. There's a curveball in to Snyder. One and two. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Mixes, not getting very far off second base. Allie Reynolds throwing in the bullpen for New York. Snyder swings and misses for strike three, and Page strikes him out. And thus Snyder, in a five-game series, has now struck out eight times, and this ties the World Series record for the most strikeouts in an eight-game series. It was uh, originally set by Rogers Hornsby. Robinson at the plate. 
And uh, Stengel steps out in front of the Yankee bench, gets the attention of the infield, and Page uh, to uh, caution against the bunt for a base hit. Robinson swings and follows the ball on top of the stand out of play. No balls, one strike. Out the field, round to left. Page works, Robinson swings a high foul back on the screen. Nothing into no balls, two strikes. The Yankees, 10, the Dodgers, 6. Makes us at second, one out, last of the ninth inning. The lights are on for the first time in the history of World Series play. Mr. Chandler, after conferring with the two senior umpires, have been turned on. Excellent move, is getting dark inside the park itself. Mexis is standing down on second. Page delivers. Robinson swings, and there's a nubbed foul ball into the third base stand. That ball was in on Jack's hands. No ball, two strikes. And then Page bearing down. This is one of his most uh, important ballistic assignments. Reynolds, who pitched a shutout and won the first game, one to nothing, nailed down the last ten dodges. Yesterday is throwing in the bullpen for the Yankees. Stengel isn't worried about tomorrow. He doesn't want any tomorrow. He wants it today. Throw. Swung on and missed. Robinson tries to check his swing and can't. He struck out. There was a dancing curveball on the outside that got him. And Page is bearing down. He's rolling. And the Yankees, who hold the record, of course, for teams getting in the World Series the most frequently, winning the most World Series games and the most World Series titles, are trying to, uh, in their 16th series, nail down their 55th series victory and their 12th series won. They're only one out away from it. Gene Hamansky up and takes a curveball over. Paul strike. That field step toward right. 10 to 6, favor New York. Throw, swung on, and fouled off into the stands back of third base. No ball, two strikes. Well, this is the uh, third meeting between the Yankees and the Dodgers in the, the Fall Classic, and uh, they'll be meeting some more. Both great farm systems. Maskey holding a club down by the end. The Dodgers down to the last strike of their last out. Trailing by four with a man at second. Page. Finest relief pitcher in the trade these days. Trying to finally put the Yankees in the clubhouse victorious. Let's see. The pitch too low under the knees and it is ball one. One ball, two strikes. One and two. Hamansky, square stance. Reynolds begins easing up. Going down to Nahos in the bullpen for New York. Page, that is the sign. Big fellow ready, delivers. A curve low. Ball two. Ball game is still alive. Two balls, two strikes. The count is two and two. Two men are gone. Page takes out a big red bandana and mops the beads of perspiration off of his face. Now he steps there on the mound, looks down with those cold blue eyes of his, takes the sign from Stocky, Crouch, Yogi Berra, catch you back to the plate. Makes it still standing at second after opening up the last of the night with a pinch hit double. 2-2 pitch. Just low outside, just missing, and Page a little bit unhappy about that decision. It's a full count of three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Three and two. Page on the mound. Works three and two. Ball four, and Havansky walks. That's the first to go. There's some balls. 
First ball given up by Joe Page. And Gil Hodges walks to the plate. The big strapping first baseman hit a home run with two on to get Rashi out of the game and get the Dodgers uh, up to within four runs behind. They were at one time trailing by nine. The ball game remains as it was since Hodges uh, last swung that bat for the home run, 10 to 6. The tying run is Roy Olmo waiting on deck. 10 to 6, New York, two men on. Hodges takes a high curve ball for ball one. And uh, Reynolds is now throwing steadily in the bullpen. Stengel jumps to the front of his dugout again. Boy, he's acting like a flea with a hot foot. Moves third baseman Brown a little deeper. The one and all pitch in there for a call strike. It was a fastball. One ball, one strike. Fades in a set position, delivers. Outside a fastball to ball two. And Page hollows on the decision on that one. He didn't like it. Two balls, one strike. All right, that tension is closing in. Hodges under orders, of course. The manager shot and pitch by pitch. The 2 1 pitch is swung on a high foul back out of play on the screen. It's now 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes. Page again with that red bandana. Now Stengel walking down to the water cooler. That wobbling, familiar walk of his. Two balls, two strikes. Stengel standing up. He's not even sitting down. The 2-2 pitch is swung on and missed strike three. And the Yankees are champions again. For the 12th time, the Yankees are champions of the world. And Joe Page is being surrounded by his teammates. Casey Stengel out there to shake him by the hand. And so, I guess the story right now is Casey Stengel, who was with the first, uh, played in the very first game in this ballpark at Ebbetsfield, 1913. It was a long time, but he comes back as manager of the world champion, New York Yankees. So, that does do it. That wraps it up. So, that's all for that one. Uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, both ball clubs. I'd like to uh, congratulate the work of the umpires on uh, the handling of the game by Commissioner Chandler and his staff. And uh, without further ado, Mel, it's nice to work with you, and congratulations on your assignment. Uh, give my best to Stengel and the Yankees. The Yankees, champions of the world in 1949, winning it four out of five and finishing with Joe Page, uh, artistically nailing it down. Okay, Mel, here you are. The best of luck. Thank you very much, Red. And again, let me just say that it was a tremendous pleasure, as it always is, and I hope it, uh, we'll have the opportunity of working together again in the future. And so the Yankees win their 12th World's Championship in uh, 16 series in which they have participated, and that is the fourth time that they have uh, won a World's Championship in five games. The totals, the Yankees 10 runs, 11 hits, one error, nine left on. The Dodgers, six runs, 11 hits, two errors, and nine men left on. Vic Rashi is credited with the win, his first World Series victory, while the loser is Rex Barney, his second defeat. He has won one. Banta, Erskine, Hatton, Felica, and Minner in relief, and Joe Page, you might call that a bit of poetic justice in a way. Joe Page, the big guy who had so much to do with the Yankees winning the pennant as he came in over 60 ball games in the course of the year in relief, and was one of the key figures, so much so that he is one of the uh, few pitchers who have ever been considered in the uh, voting for the Most Valuable Player Award. And as you always say, it's just a shame when you get two great ball clubs together that there must be one of them that will lose. So hats off to them both. We hope that you enjoyed this World Series. This is Mel Allen saying smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company and Red Barber.